go. Hey, everyone. Hey, hey, Welcome hey. to the podcast. This week brought to you by Betterment, eHarmony, and Hymns. I'm Gus. I'm Jeff. What'd I miss? I'm Bernie as I'm well. Gus. You didn't miss anything. What'd you miss from what? Oh, uh, from I, I missed about 500 episodes. <laughs> I think. Only, well, well, don't exaggerate. It's I'm been sorry. only about 370. 370 episodes. Gus is still very upset with his iPhone. Okay. Gavin is still bad at explaining things. I had to go to the bathroom, and then when I, I we moved, and I didn't know where it was. I'm uh, sorry. We should yeah. have, we, we forgot to forward that. I appreciate it. I got something today that kind of scared the shit out of me. What's that? Cancer? <laughs> that Jesus. would scare the shit out of me. But no, it wasn't cancer. It's the uh, the the business equivalent of that, I think, though. I got a certified letter from the IRS. Like, Why the Uh-oh. fuck am I getting that? Turns out I owed them some money from last year. Oh. And so... I paid that right away <laughs> as soon as I got it. So you're saying they certified They send letters. you certified letters. They don't call you from like weird blocked numbers asking you to go buy <laughs> iTunes gift cards to pay them back? Have Indian- I been paying the IRS <laughs> wrong for years? From an Indian call center somewhere? <laughs> Have you heard some of those like those calls where they go after people? There's one guy in particular on YouTube who will lean into those and, and impersonate the person he was imitating. He has a great old lady voice. And this guy was just bullying the shit out of what appeared to be an old lady trying to get her to, like, send him money. She's going to go to fucking jail and everything else. We're talking about the scams yeah. stuff. I'm assuming it's a scam. So Yeah, those scams are everywhere. Yep. It's it's unbelievable how many I get, you know, in a given week. It's like the IRS is calling me. My fucking auto warranty is expired. Do uh, you answer every time? No. I've started to because... I, I used to just let it go to voicemail, and then if I don't get a voicemail, I know it's trash. But I didn't answer, and it was like a school thing, and mm-hmm. I needed uh, they needed my attention. So now I feel like I have to answer the phone every time because I got a kid. Yeah. I read a story actually the other day. I think mm-hmm. it was yesterday on the New York Times. They were talking about how the federal government, the FTC, realizes what a big problem this is. And they tell this one anecdote about this surgeon who's the same situation where he's like, he's getting so many junk calls that he doesn't answer his phone. And he said he can't do that anymore because one time he just he declined a call because he thought it was a junk call and it was uh, an OR calling him to reattach someone's thumb and he missed the call. I'm surprised he even told that story. It right. Like a bad <laughs> yeah, story yeah. to tell. Uh, but he, I guess like it was delayed. Like he waited, they left a voicemail, he saw the voicemail, then he went in. But it's like you're delaying treatment for something that's potentially super time sensitive. It's like it's, it's fucking awful. I wrote what I thought was a fairly funny tweet on Facebook. For Friday, some sometime, about my phone, a little little script between me and my phone about how my phone doesn't tell me when I have a call; it I just tells that. me that I missed a call. That's mm-hmm. what it does. Just a little, little funny little anecdote, Jeff. No big deal. Just a little tweet. Just little I wait. know I saw it. No big deal, dude. ABD. Vitriol. Why? Vitriol in the replies. Why? What do you think, dude? It's why don't you get why don't you get a real fucking phone? Because oh, you have yeah. a shitty fucking phone. I was like, dude, come on, seriously. It's like, is this what you're really... Well, here's what I would have responded. Sir, what phone do you have? You have a Pixel 2? Uh, I, I, I misspoke. It was a Pixel 2. <laughs> That's exactly My what it was. My phone was, that didn't, was whatever it's, your phone it's is. what your phone is. Yeah, I hate whenever when I make... brand loyalty become brand anger? Whenever I make a generic tweet or generic statement about mobile phones that's applicable to either platform, and we're like, oh, it's because you use a shitty iOS. Like, I get iOS is shitty. I understand why it's shitty. But if I'm complaining about something that's a problem for you also, don't say it's a fucking iOS problem. Like, autocorrect. Yeah. Autocorrect's a problem everywhere. Don't fucking come at me for iOS bullshit. <laughs> I like how you fell fucking right idiots. into it. You fell straight into it. Dude, dude, I mean, this has been, <laughs> been bubbly. You hit a nerve. Yeah, yeah. It's like, a, I'm sure you get it all the time for the hey, fucking Xbox stuff, right? What else are you mad about? <laughs> Anything else? I'm mad about a lot of stuff. Tell me. We'll get there. We got we got an hour and a half. Why am I going to use it all I just like, the first I like, how, I like mad Gus. Oh, God. It's well, talk about the iPhone. That's fucking, that makes it matter than anything else on the planet. Which is, I hope you never switch. <laughs> I hope you buy extra iPhones in the future because it's fucking hilarious when you're mad about it. Oh, you know what he's doing? You mm. know what he's doing? Oh God, I think he might know. He's remodel. He's remodeling. He's doing a renovation project. I know. This motherfucker. It's great. Yeah. This is like the next two years of this podcast. <laughs> is that yeah. Gus's inability to manage contractors? <laughs> to be fair, yes. The contractor's fine. Everything's going okay. It's just. Yeah, was it day four? <laughs> it's just the memory of. Uh, of past. Wait events. until it rains once and then you'll be it'll be a nightmare. They won't show yeah. up for four weeks and you'll be you'll have a yeah, missing I, wall I, like I you remember, did last time. I, I lived it. I was there. I'm it's dealing crazy. with a thing. Well, I should say uh my ex is dealing with it, and Griffin's dealing with a thing where uh they discovered some damage in the studio and uh they uh we pulled it up and realized that the contractors used untreated wood when they reinstalled the floors and stuff in our studio. And uh, it all rotted, and we had to replace the whole thing and some of the walls now because the rot got up into the walls. All Dude. because the contractors we used used untreated pine. 
It seems like that's a no-brainer, right? Like they're in a pile next to each other. It's like, which one do you want? I don't know. Is it, it's going on the ground where ground stuff is? Probably use the treated one. Yeah. yeah. You, you would think so. You would think so. Yeah, then that's why you hire professionals, right? Because they Did should Did you know. hire professionals? Yes. Was it like friends? People from no, 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 it was people. It was prof- I don't even remember how we found them. This was these are the people that put the second floor on, so they were a professionally vetted, mm-hmm. probably like Angie's List or something. I don't remember how I found them. Sure, it's, fair play. Yeah, well, yeah. Hopefully, this podcast is not brought to you by Angie's List. Mm. Is it? <laughs> no, it's not. Uh, yeah, I, fuck, I fucking hate that shit. It's like you you bring someone in. Like if you know you're over your head, you know you can't do it right. You bring someone in. You trust that they have the experience and they know how to do it right. Yeah, and they still fuck it up. I hate that shit. Well, they just what it is is they they want to get the job, and then they balance it with like eight other jobs, and then you have to wait your turn, even though that wasn't part of the initial conversation. It's what always takes place. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hire a con- hire a contractor. Hire a general contractor. I'll tell you who you should hire. Big bucks You can do it. <laughs> the whoever is the people like I, I live in a like I rent a condo now. Mm-hmm. Whoever the people are that do the management of that condo. Did I tell you the story about how the, my condo flooded? No. Yeah. So how? He, you're like on the billionth floor. I, I'm you? on the billionth floor. Yeah. Um, I was gone for like a week or two weeks traveling, and when I'm not there, Millie's not there, right? So the place sits empty. Oh. Yeah. And so I was like ten days. I was gone. I got home. I picked up Millie. We came to the place. Had a Friday there. It was totally fine. Saturday evening, Millie comes in and she goes, hey, um, I spilled some water or something in my closet. And I just, it's a little bit more than I can clean up. I don't know what to do. And I was like, okay, let me take a look at it. Spilled water in a closet. I walk into her closet. She like, I got like, just like a walk, it's just like a walk-in closet. Okay. And she likes to sit in there and like watch shit on her phone. Ah, it's her space. Yeah, it's her space, right? It gets yeah. her further away from me. I was going to say, I get it. more doors. And uh, more doors. It's, yeah, it's, it's two, <laughs> two more doors. You go through the bathroom to get to the, yeah, it's extra doors. And, uh, oh, I, and she's, I don't know. I don't know what's going on in there. I don't want to know. But I get in there and there's standing water in the entire closet. What? Like, 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 like how much? Standing, like, I, like, uh, uh, up my shoe. Jesus. Like, I thought my, like, I thought it was going to crest my wow. fucking toes. And uh, what I, go, out of a I go, I go, Millicent, what did you spill? And she goes, I don't remember spilling anything, but uh, I, I don't know what it is. And I go, this is a leak. This isn't, you, yeah, this you, this is not, not you. a spill. Yeah. You didn't do this. this and she's like, oh, thank God. I was, I thought I was screwed. I thought I was in so much trouble. Oh, and I go, yeah, I don't know how, you, how a human being could spill this much water without a hose. And so I start looking and I find it's like seeping in from like a point in the wall. And I go, damn. All right. Well, when did you find out? When did you notice this? Because we've been home for a while. And she goes, well, I, I noticed it yesterday when we got home. And I go, like Wait, 24 yeah. hours ago yesterday? She goes, yeah, 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 it was like 24 hours ago. And I go, and you told me now? And she was like, I was just, I just didn't, I was just building up courage. I didn't, I thought I screwed <laughs> up and I didn't want to get in more trouble. And I'm like, you just did 24 hours more damage, damage. to this place. <laughs> yeah, I'm like, we won't, we won't tell them that part. And <laughs> so, put it on the podcast. <laughs> yeah, well, so my condo, they have a thing where you submit a, like a work order. And you can mark it as like normal or like, holy shit, I just flooded an apartment. You have a number to call? Uh, well, they have a web portal and I want to use technology in the way it's made. It, they, they, they tell you to use it. So I'm like, this is a Saturday. I say, I'm going to use the appropriate measures. So I submit the ticket. I mark it as, uh, holy shit, this is, this is a big deal. A <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> couple hours go by. I go to leave. I go through my entryway and I notice that my, my, uh, my hardwood floors are like this. And I'm oh, like, God. oh, shit, it's not just in her closet. And I realize it's gone through her closet and into the entryway, and it's fucked up all the hardwood, and it's all, like, bubbling up. And I'm like, ooh. Still haven't heard anything, so I submit another ticket. Go have a Saturday night, eat dinner, go to bed, whatever. Get up Sunday, and I'm like, man, I still haven't heard from these motherfuckers. So I go downstairs to the front desk, and I go, hey, uh, yeah, I'm submitting these work tickets, and nobody's responding to me. And they go, oh, we don't check those on the weekend. Oh, my what? God. They go, why do you have an emergency? emergency? Yeah. Why does it say, why do you, A, tell me to use it, and B, tell me if it's an emergency, click this. If you're not even going to look at it until Monday. And she goes, yeah, well, that's, that's a good point. And uh surprised that never came up. And uh, anyway, so <laughs> they came. shut off the fire alarm. They came. <laughs> saves money. Found out that there was a, a pipe that burst above my room. That uh, usually does it. Yeah, and it flooded everything. But I on Monday morning, I, I gave them permission to enter. I came home Monday night. The entire thing was fixed. There you go. Brand new hardwood, new carpet, new the walls had been fixed. They cut a hole in the ceiling and replaced it. And Probably with it. treated pine. Probably with treated pine. And it was and I and I never saw anybody. I never had to sign anything. I never had to talk on the phone with anybody. I just went to work with a f- 
like in a river, and I came home to a perfect place. Does he have to like dry that shit out? They they did come by Sunday morning and put a dryer. After I talked to them, they came by and put a dryer in her closet. They got like a fan. Yeah, like a fan, a fan. thing. Right. It's yeah. like a, it's and so like and, and they just said shut the door, don't touch it. And so I by the time I got home Monday night, they had removed it. Hmm. Yeah. It's awesome. So I can find out who those people are. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, if I ever have to remove water, if that's part of my remodel, I'll I'll, I'll yeah, ask fair you. enough. I mean, they fixed the floor. They put a hole in the ceiling. Fixed the ceiling. They put a hole in the ceiling. Well, they had to get to the pipe. That's a, that's a very special skill set. <laughs> I need someone who can put a hole in my ceiling and then fix the hole. Oh, okay. You didn't yeah. mention that part. That's the yeah. tough part. Yeah, yeah, you just said put a hole in the ceiling and fix like, the hole. I can put a hole in the ceiling. I, mean, I can get to you in three weeks. <laughs> I got a couple <laughs> other jobs. I'm pretty backed up right now. And so millennials often complain about not being able to afford a house in their 20s. Which, by the way. Nobody can afford a house in the 20s. Jeff is literally the it's the reason why I know you is because Jeff could afford a house in his 20s. And I didn't know how. And you had it through the VA VA home loan. But that was a shitty loan. I mean, that was a good loan in 1999 when I bought that house. Too. Uh, but it was a 7% interest. That was good interest in 1999. Yeah, I, I was amazed when you got that. I know. Because um, the industry, like the average was like 8. Yeah. Or I got for 6 and the, and the average was 7. But uh but uh, my parents, by the way, had a home in the 80s. It was yeah. adjustable rate in Houston when the bus hit, and it went to 13.5%. It's like Jesus. A, a house on a credit card. Oh, oh God. They Christ, had to get out of that dude. thing fast. That is yeah. insane. That was, that, pretty nuts. that was where you grew up? Yeah, it was the house I grew up in. We had to move like my junior year in high school because it was just like couldn't stay in that house. Yeah, that's rough, yep. dude. Sucked. So, I mean, just for reference, I think a lot of people don't own homes. They don't know. Like nowadays, you probably spend what, between. Four and a half, five percent would be good. Yeah, I'd say four and a half. To five. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, they got down to like two. At yeah. one well, point. it depends on what you want to do. Like a fifteen-year fixed, you yeah. probably get it in the in the mid threes, maybe. Yeah. Look at this with the financial podcast here. Yeah. Going so I'm, well, I'm anyway, just establishing is, for our listeners who you, may not know. You were talking about how it's hard, and you don't millennials complain about not having a house in your twenties. I was going to counter by saying I had one, and it's not the B. I, I, ultimately, I don't think the VA home loan was a big like really helped me. It's just not that hard to own. A, it's not as hard to own a house as you think it is. I not as hard made eight dollars an hour working for Telenetwork when I got that house. Yeah, like it, I just bought a house within my means. Yep. Yeah. Which is was you know it's a nice house, good I starter think, house. The, you got to start okay. at some point. The big intimidation factor for a lot of people is just finding gathering up the money for a down payment or like to be able to start that process yeah. and get into it. The point I was going to make though is also it's an overrated process owning your own home. Like look at your experience. I don't know that I'm gonna. I don't yeah. know what I'm gonna do. I'm renting. Uh, while I, you know, figure my life out. I don't know that I'll buy another home, though. Yeah. It's one of these things, it's like the American dream is you have to own your own house. You actually, you actually really don't. That also, I, I was reading about this a while back, This the idea of the American dream was manufactured in the 1950s. It mm -hmm. didn't exist before yeah. then. And we're the only country in the world that thinks you need to own your own home. Yep. It's very uncommon. Do you remember Stefan Hefflinger? Yeah. Dude, very well. Yeah. yeah. Follow him on Twitter. I stuff, had a man. great conversation with him years ago about this, and he was just like, everybody in Europe thinks you guys are crazy <laughs> for being obsessed with buying your own homes. None of us do that. Yeah. Yeah. Very, very few places in other parts of the world will do that. Yeah. It's almost as if there was an industry that sprung up that encouraged us <laughs> all to do something, and everyone did it. Our diamond engagement ring. Uh, are they uh, are they big everywhere else too? Or is that just a U.S. thing? I think that's mainly a U.S. thing. I think that's also a much more recent thing than we realize. I think that's like from the the 30s. I think or it's the like 40s. 30s or 40s. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I think it, like that's not a very long-standing tradition. Yeah, and it was it was manufactured. Yeah, the, is that true? The, the demand. Yeah. Well, supposedly De Beers. De Beers has controls all the fucking diamonds. Vaults of diamonds that they just keep in vaults to maintain scarcity. But it's like they're making those fake diamonds now. They're like the the lab meat. Which is the big revolution in tech now? Yeah, they're making that like three thirty thousand dollars steak. That'll be a fifty dollars steak in ten years. But it's it's meatless meat or what? Yeah, yeah organismless like, meat. Is that? Like, I wonder about that. Like, how fatty is it? Can you request like I want extra marbling in my printed meat? Sure. Yeah, why not? Or like if you're getting like printed chicken, it's like I want uh, print me up some dark meat or like print, print, <laughs> print me up a me. breast. <laughs> like, print me up. <laughs> like how do you how do you choose? Because there's like so many. Like qualities that go into meat, like as far as the taste and the texture, and like, how, like what is this? Is it just like a middle of the road meat, or can you like customize it a little bit? Y'all don't know. You don't have any in a fifteen thousand dollar steak. I really, yeah, my I really hit the complete limit of my knowledge on lab meat. At I ran out pretty fast. Yeah. <laughs> well, I have questions. I, got I was in my headline. head. You were going on and on. I was thinking about that new Donald Glover video. <laughs> hey, have you seen? I haven't seen it. Yeah, it's good. I have watched now at Wes's recommendation and Gus's consistent. 
Recommendation: I have watched the first season of Atlanta. Did, did you like it? So happy when you texted me the other Fucking day you were watching it. it. That yeah. show is amazing. Have you yeah. seen season two yet? Yeah, still, I love. Season two is very different than season one. It is. I thought it was up and down, very up and down. I thought episode one of season two was one of the best things I've ever seen. Alligator uh, I, Man. I thought the uh, the one where Darius goes to get the piano was fucking amazing. I haven't seen that one yet. Okay. I've, I'm only four episodes into season two. It might be like five. It may be okay. like episode five or six. And I honestly, I wasn't crazy about two through four, but one was so fucking good. Yeah. Atlanta's amazing. It's, it's one of my favorite TV shows. It made me a fan of Cat Williams as a serious actor. God, he's so good. He's yep. phenomenal. He's really, really, really good. He really is. Yep. He plays that character and that role unbelievably well. Yeah. Fuck. I thought I in particular love the uh, uh, the network episode where it was like basically like BET. And they're paired up with fake commercials and everything like that. That was fucking amazing. The, the talk show, like the, the Charlie Rose style thing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I watched that episode like four times. It that was episode is so good. Really well done. Yeah. And it's it's it, it's so standalone and even in, within the first season. That I think the first season's all over the place. But at yeah, least it really it's, it's over all over the place. At least on a very high quality, consistent yeah. basis. Did you guys see Donald Glover on SNL this weekend? I haven't seen no. it yet. I've recorded. I've really watched it. Yet. It's one of the best episodes of SNL I've seen in a long time. Like almost every season. But I keep Brown hearing that about SNL. Amazing. Sterling K. Brown was good. Yeah. What's up? I keep hearing that about SNL. Like, their recent episodes, people are saying, this is the best one I've seen in forever. I I, I think SNL's been fairly awesome for the last probably eight, nine years. Mm -hmm. like I'm, I consider myself a huge fan. I watch every week. Uh, I wouldn't say that the season's any better or worse than previous seasons, but that episode specifically was very, very good. Really? Yeah. What you and the Sterling the, K. Brown one was really yeah, good. Was but the, the Donald Glover one was like, it was impressive. Like he he the whole point of it, like his, his opening monologue and stuff was just about how he auditioned twice and didn't get the role, even though he's like in a, a triple threat because he can. Well, he's got a funny joke about that, too. But like and so it's just like I get the impression that he's like and I'm still pissed about it. And I get the impression there was some honesty there. And so he really like knocked it out of the park. Yeah, it's good. Internet guy. Internet guy. Yeah. I yeah. mean, we, if you go back early enough on the podcast. You can probably see us talking about Mystery Donald team. Glover. Yeah. yeah, Derek Comedy. Yep. Yeah. And I remember we might have talked about him because everyone called him Derek because he was on that with, um, uh, gosh, why are their names escaping? Well, was Ellie Kemper here. was on it. Sometimes. Ellie Kemper was on it. She was on it. And the other two dudes who's the, 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 the guys that weren't Donald Glover. No, no, no. I'm totally blanking what, what on it. What was the name of the uh, Mystery Team? Mystery Team, they yeah. Put out of the film? yeah. Mystery Team was the, was the movie. They had the, <laughs> you remember, was the, Bellum, Bellamy? Was that the... D.C. Pearson. God, I don't know why he's blanking so the hard. Sketch, I don't know why. In the film... Fest. Do you remember that? That was no, the best episode of Derek Comedy. I don't remember that. Where they had the high school film class, and they had to show their high school films, and his was just about how his girlfriend was a slut. And, or it kept threading <laughs> through all the yeah. other ones. God, so fucking funny. Yeah. What the fuck, Bellamy? <laughs> it's just great. Yeah. I also love the way he goes and he stands up, and it's like, then the whole... I uh, gotta go watch it. Yeah, yeah Old yeah, sure Derek Comedy stuff is really, really fucking funny. Yeah. And that I thought the mystery team was good. I went and saw it at the Alamo when it came around. We I were working I downtown, it. right? When yeah. that came out. Probably so. Yeah. 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 That was back in the days when it was like it was like Derek Comedy, Barats and Beretta, and the Ball Saxbury people. Do you remember that? No. We used to watch that all the time. <laughs> you remember it. Yeah, I, do. I don't remember what that, that yeah. group was called. Yeah. Uh, I remember also uh College Humor, uh Prank Wars. Oh yeah. That, that was we, we yeah. That, all the time. that might even <laughs> been a little before Prank Wars. Get lost in like in good internet sketch comedy. There's a group called Mr. Potato Man or something? No, that's not right. Something potato. Iron potato. Um, oh, oh. They made Samesies, which is probably right. one of the best internet shorts ever. It's about a group of cavemen that uh, love having sex with each other. And they've realized that, no, we got to have sex with opposites. Like, women have to have sex with men and men have to have sex with women. And because Samesies doesn't make people and there's not enough people. And it's just this really funny. <laughs> Mr. Fun Iron Potato. Mr. Mr. Iron Potato. That's what it is. Yeah. <laughs> God, so it's really fucking funny. It's like, we can't do samesies for a while. Kevin goes, I love samesies because we all love samesies. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and it's just like, this is cut this argument about not having, not being able to have gay sex. And they're all furious about it. It's, it's really fucking funny. Yeah. I haven't thought about that, about <laughs> samesies in a long time. Yeah. I just looked at like, Literally, like I think it's the ago. only video on that channel. And they made the one video and they're like, mic drop and they're out. Yeah. You ever watch Chris and Jack stuff at all? No. Man, they do some really funny stuff, too. Your buddy, uh, Dante, that came and did some AH stuff with you guys? Dante Bosca? Yeah, he was yeah. in one of their things. Um, anyway, they do really funny stuff. Like, the, I think the one you might have seen, Gus, is Perfectly Timed Villain. You ever seen that one? Oh, yeah, Where yeah. The spy comes on in? The, yeah. yeah. It's just, they're really fucking funny. Yeah. That's a good one. Cool. I saw Ren was making a PUBG video. I can't wait to see what that's going to be. Remember Ren the Reaper from... Oh, yeah, back, shit. Back, yeah. back in the old RT community days? He's like one of the main dudes at Corridor Digital now. Really? Mm hmm Yeah. 
One other piece of advice before we get too far away from millennials or future homeowners. If you have any fucking problems with water. If you hear water. Dress them immediately. Yeah, if you wait. hear water and you shouldn't be hearing water, investigate that. Even if, if you, you hear water and you think you might supposed to be hearing it, still investigate it. And, and, and if you have a kid, <laughs> just assume that they flooded their closet. Yes. Like once a week. There's also very few things you can do in your house that you can set them in a way that they just start to continually cost you money. And water is one of those things. And it's surprising when you turn a faucet on and don't turn it off, the enormous amount of money. It's more expensive easily than electricity mm -hmm. to leave that thing running. Yeah. And it just, especially if it's literally going down the drain, that's the money going with it. Yep. I, I learned a very valuable lesson when I moved out of my previous house, Jeff. Okay. I... Decided, you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna hold on to this house and I'm gonna rent it and I'm gonna like start being a landlord. I made that mistake. Fuck that. Never, <laughs> ever. I even rented to a friend. I rented to fucking Ezra. And also a mistake. And then Are I got the fucking water bill. Oh, I got God. the water bill one month. It was like eighteen hundred dollars for, for water? water. For water. For water. Water's free, dude. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I I am me. Like I, I opened at like 8 p.m. at night. I like what the fuck. And Ezra was going back and forth between Austin and L.A. I raced to the house. I'm like, I got a leak. I was imagining a sinkhole like opening underneath the house. Yeah. I go in. I open the front door. As soon as I walk in the front door, I hear running water. And I'm like, okay. I can immediately hear what this is. I go and the bathroom, the toilet in the first floor bathroom. Was running and I just went jiggle jiggle and it stopped. Eighteen hundred dollars. <laughs> you just saved yourself. Eighteen hundred dollars. And luckily Ezra is like Mr. Gigantor, oh intimidating. So he got the city of Austin to somehow forgive that bill. Really? Yeah. I'm Did really he sure. really? How? I, I fought with Austin Energy before or the city of Austin Utilities. It was they, reduced. They do not, it was reduced. They do not give up. Yeah. Jesus. I literally it was like this. That was it. Have no, you guys noticed it. how every person on earth knows Ezra? It's bizarre. Oh, yeah. Like I was at a fucking get together, like a meetup for Millie's preschool. Like we still have a different like groups of friends that all hang out from when Millie and her friends were in preschool together. And I see these people like once it twice a year now, maybe. I'm just imagining all the preschool and, kids are gonna be the ones who know Ezra in the story. Well, <laughs> and I was talking to one of the moms who has no idea even what Rooster Teeth is or what I do really. And we're, I, we're, I was explaining my job to her and she goes, oh, like uh, like what, Ezra Cooperstein. And I'm like, do you know Ezra? And she's like, yeah, of course I know Ezra. And I'm like, how? She goes, I don't know, I just know him. Yeah. I've run into a lot of people that are like that. They're like, oh yeah, I know Ezra. Suspect. It is a little odd. <laughs> I'm like, he, but this was early on. I'm like, but he lives in California. And she's like, I guess, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I don't know specifics, but yeah, I know. You can meet people. I ran, in, I ran into him at Whole Foods how was that? a couple weeks ago. It's weird. The, I don't down, like downtown Whole Foods. Yeah, I don't, like, Foods? I don't like running into people outside of normal context. Yeah, like I run into like running into people. Period. Right. That's I run into Clarissa from events house. all the time, and I tell her like, "Listen, I don't want to see you outside of work. Like, like we're gonna work out a schedule that way. I don't have to fucking run into you." Yeah, th that's it. Bothers me to know that you use my Whole Foods now. We should coordinate so we don't run into each other. <laughs> all right. Let's just be awkward. Oh, now we're figuring out where Gus we lives. ran into each other at Best Buy, and we were like, "Oh, hey." Yeah. It was like three years ago. <laughs> I'm getting a sense of where you live now because he won't tell me. Well, I just like, I just I've like, been to his new place. I just like go, you, did you go to the old place? No, I just I've never had Jordan Swears. I just like going to Whole Foods. That's it. And if I'm gonna go to Whole Foods, I'm gonna go to the big one. Yeah. I mean it's the best Whole Foods ever. Right. Life. It's not it's, it's like in the middle of Austin. Do you eat there sometimes? Like just go to eat at the I do. Court? I, I eat, eat there I eat all there the time lot. when our office is downtown. It's fucking great. Yeah. Yeah. It's like in my front yard essentially. So not all the time. Don't overplay it. All the time. <laughs> not all the time. You can go every day of the week and eat something different. It's true. Wholefoods.com. But we barbecue too far for solid. It was too far in summer. Yeah. We, oh, no. we went there with you oh, quite Sometimes. frequently too. But you say it was time. to be fair, it was mostly you and I, or you and I, and you Jason. And I. Yeah, Mike's Pub, Mike's Pub, right across the street <laughs> in a parking garage. Do you know we found out that Megan Castro worked there when we were going there? Yeah. You see, you guys knew her then. No, no, no. We no. figured it out. Megan, Gus, and I figured it out at Oblinado because we were all. It was odd how we all looked familiar and we couldn't figure it out. And then one day we were talking about cheeseburgers. We were talking about cheeseburgers or something. <laughs> about, as, as you do, as you do. Man, uh, God, what's your, what's your favorite cheeseburger in town? Right now? Yeah. G come back to me. Wait, wait, wait. Okay, so I learned something about you, and I couldn't have learned it through Esther because we don't have. I don't talk to. Her I directly. think you did. I think I know what you're getting at. So, what, what? <laughs> Gus is... has a favorite hamburger place, and as for rewards, you get gift cards. To okay, go to so it. my favorite hamburger place in Austin Can is I... Mighty Fine. Okay. And I was gonna get on, your, on your birthday, they'll mail you like a like a free hamburger card. And the problem with Mighty Fine is it's like 
it's out of the way, right? There's only mm-hmm. like three locations in town. It's like you got to way down south or way up north. So I never want to go because it's way out of the way. But when they mail me the fucking free hamburger card, I'm like, well, now I got to go. It's like, so the, <laughs> the, only, the only time I go is when I got a free hamburger. It's like, it's, it's my favorite hamburger and they're like going, but I won't go unless it's free. What's wrong with you? It's, it's out of the way. Just treat yourself. Go get the fucking I don't hamburger. I a hamburger. No, it's all gross and soggy. <laughs> Just go get in your car and go. Then it, you gotta drive up there. You know there's traffic. I you wait think? 364 days to save seven bucks. Go What's the, enjoy your life. For I don't God's know. sake. I don't know. Yeah, he's got you there. Enjoy your life. You're not getting any younger. I'm gonna say Sandy's. I eat a lot of Sandy's now because it's kind of close to where I live. Mm-hmm. So I'm not like Pete Terry's. I that, ate a lot of Pete Terry's. You haven't been down there in the summer yet, have you? No, I, mean, I moved in in October. Yeah, it's it, dude. Sandy's is so fucking great in the summer. It's yeah. just like it reminds me of when I was growing up in New England and upstate New York, except it's blazingly hot at eight p.m. Uh, but yeah, Sandy's just awesome. I used to play. They they fucking they kind of ruined it for me though because I used to uh, I used to have this weekly routine where I would go to Sandy's and eat every Monday. And uh, I played this game called the twenty dollar game with a lady. <laughs> they take credit cards now, so they can't do it anymore. But I would go and I'd order my hamburger or whatever, and then I'd pay her the twenty dollars, and she would go, "Do you have anything smaller than a 20? And I'd go. Nope. And she'd go, I can't make change. And I'd go, that's not my problem. She'd go, <sighs> and she'd go back for a while and yell and scream. And then she'd come back and give me the change. I never understood why this was a problem for them. I never understood why it was either. But it was every Monday I would go to Sandy's and play the $20 game. And every time I'd have the biggest grin, I'd be like, you know, I don't. Because <laughs> like back then you'd eat from Sandy's, it'd be like four bucks. Yeah. Or something. It was like yeah. four. I would get like two corn dogs. It'd be like four and a half dollars. Yeah. And the lady hated me. And I hated her, but I loved making her mad. It does seem like people who only take cash as a business aren't prepared for that in any way. Stop trying to rip off the government. Just fucking yeah, that's what it is, right? Machine. Or is it just their slim ass margins? No, they... no, it's it, well, I, no, Never... it's, it's 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 yeah, it's people that are like Salt Lake. They don't take credit cards. Yeah, just fucking scamming the IRS, dude. <laughs> Do you remember when I got mad at Chilancho when we worked downtown? Like I went up there. Remember that's back when they had like the the fucking trailer down yeah. there. This is such an awesome thing, by the way. Explain what cilantro is. It's like a Korean Mexican fusion taco. <laughs> truck. You realize that's not stupid when you it's say it out loud, stupid. right? You gotta get like a chicken kimchi burrito, right? Fucking kimchi great. fries. But uh, I went there and like they just started taking credit cards. Like it's like you're talking about. Like yeah. they didn't cash for They just started taking credit cards. I order my fucking food. It's like five or six bucks. And the guy my credit card. He's like, oh, it's a. What do you say? It's a three dollar processing fee on credit cards. I was like, what? He was like, "Well, yeah, we got to charge like an extra two or th- I can't remember two or three bucks processing on the credit cards." Like, it doesn't. He, he goes, "Cause it costs us money to to run credit cards." He goes, "It doesn't cost you three fucking dollars." No, it doesn't. I said, "I I help run an online store. It costs you like three percent probably to process that credit card." Did you say? Do you know who I am? Is that what I, you just? Do you know who I am? Did you? I'm Gus Rowe from the internet. Like. And then you, the did you give him you gave him a CD of the Apple Switch video that you burned <laughs> and you signed it. And, and then <laughs> so then I was like, "It doesn't. It costs you like three percent, three and a half percent to run that." He goes, "All right, we'll just charge you fifty cents." Oh. oh. And I, was like, I never, I never went back. Where's this, where's this place? Uh, who knows? All over the place. Chilantra. His name was John Ticketmaster. Oh. <laughs> so yeah, I never went back. So Chilantra. So they're scamming credit card companies. They are. I best, don't know. If, I don't know if they still do that. That was like seven years ago or something. To answer your question, best hamburger in Austin is Smash Burger. Not Smash Burger. No. I always no. say that. Oh I God. Say that. No. Shack Burger. Shack. Wait, what's it called? Shake Shack. Shake Shack. That's oh my it. God. Shake Shack. I don't even it. know what the Step best burger is. Step one of fun of knowing the best burger. <laughs> yeah. In Austin is knowing what the fucking establishment is called. <laughs> I always, I always mess it up too because the kids are like shake smash. I tell the kids like, "Are you want to smash burger?" Like, fuck no. Well, they don't say fuck no. They say, "You want to go to the GameStop of hamburgers?" <laughs> yeah, the GameStop, right? Did they just steal the font, the sign? <laughs> it's the exact same thing. Yeah, yeah. Dude. Not smash burger. Sorry for the sorry for the inadvertent shout out, shout out. But Shake Shack, best burger in Austin. Shake Shack's pretty good. Also, Shake I like In and Out way fries. less now that they're here. Oh, what now? I used to love In and Out. Oh, I never go to In and Out. Now uh, I don't give a shit about them. Yeah. Fuck that well, place. the nice thing about Shake Shack in Austin, Shake Shack is like two hour lines everywhere else on Earth. <laughs> Nobody right. goes to Shake Shack in Austin. It's always empty when I go there. <laughs> there is a. Nobody gives a fuck. There's a hop dotty right next door to the full screen office in Playa Vista. Mm-hmm. The line there is a minute long. I and know. In Austin, it's an hour so, and a half long. So we have uh, this new thing we have set up. Oh, all right. Uh, where uh, we can interact with people who are watching the podcast live. So this is only applicable if you're live. Um, yeah, suck it. So you can go, what's the URL? Roosterteeth.com slash play. Yes. We're going to set up a quick poll where you can vote on which burger you prefer if you've been to Austin. <laughs> Such a fucking specific poll. Wait, we're just trying this service out, dude. Fucking give me a break. Well, come up with My better, a break. Sandy's you have, you, you literally track. have never used it before. You literally have any idea available, and this is what you came up with. I like, That's what they I told like, me to do. I like fucking yell at Patrick. Patrick, Patrick you, you came up with this. <laughs> I just <laughs> Patrick is backing off from this hardcore. 
Hey, you know what? This episode of the Rooster Teeth Podcast is brought to you by Betterment. Sorry for whoever's running graphics. Betterment is the largest online financial advisor designed to help customers build wealth, plan for retirement, and achieve their financial goals. In other words, its mission is to help customers make the most of their money. How? By taking complex investing strategies and using technology to make them more efficient, and by providing access to unlimited personalized advice from licensed experts. Investing should not be confusing, and Betterment is here to change all of that. At Betterment, hidden costs are nowhere to be found. No matter who you are or how much money you invest, you get everything for one low, transparent management fee. As fiduciaries, they make recommendations in their clients' best interest. They're not incentivized to recommend certain funds, and they don't have their own investment products to sell. Betterment offers personalized advice and a suite of tools to help you know whether you're on track to hit your investing goals or get to retirement you want. I can't stress enough how cool it is that they're fiduciaries and they act in your best interest. So sign up today, get one year managed free. Investing involves risk. Rooster Teeth Podcast listeners can get up to one year managed free. For more information, visit betterment.com slash teeth. That's betterment.com slash teeth. Thank you, Betterment, for sponsoring this episode of the Rooster Teeth Podcast, where we run apparently shitty hamburger polls. Can I just I can't, say I can't something, something about you saying fiduciary is kind of a turn on. I like it. Yeah. It's so, kind of tingly when you say it. The eyebrows really make it for me. Fiduciary. Oh, uh, yeah. See, there it is. Fiduciary. Same as <laughs> right. Let's go. <laughs> we'll, leave, we'll leave Bernie up here. Um, oh, yeah. There's the, the URL. Sorry, whoever's running. I, yeah, I went to this thing and it's not working for me. Did we break it? See, that's why we're doing it right now. Yeah, that's why we're doing it live. We thought we'd do our beta testing. Yeah. Oh, yeah. There we go. Zero, zero, zero. <laughs> hey, I'm winning with Sandy's. You, you can't vote for yourself, dude. I don't have a. I didn't. Do shit. What's it all jumping around? People are voting. It's live. That's the whole part of, about being live. <laughs> Your thing's getting destroyed on Mighty Fine. Fuck it. First off, Shake Shack's a nationwide chain. That's bullshit. I wouldn't even count it. At least Mighty Fine is local. Sandy's is historic. Been around for like 100 years. Sandy's has not been around for 100 At years. At least 60 years. <laughs> it's like 100 years. How quickly that changes. It's I'm closer. totally invested in this poll now. I'm totally invested. <laughs> It took me two seconds, and now I just can't stop watching anything else. It's a piece of Austin history. Well, I think Patrick just said 400 people have voted. Yeah. I'm uh, so keep keep voting, and vote for vote for fucking Mighty Fine because it's the best burger, you piece of shit. Mighty Fine's a good burger, but it's not the best. If I lose, I'm doing Infinity War spoilers for the rest of the podcast. <laughs> That's it. Hey, we're beyond spoiler territory at this point, right? If I saw get, it yesterday. If you get fucking two weekends. Uh, I, the movie's made a billion dollars. You're beyond. You're beyond. You are beyond spoilers. All I'm saying is that. If you're going to go two weekends and not see a thing, then really you shouldn't care that other people are talking about yeah, you. Yeah, no kidding. The whole, the whole culture can't put itself on pause because you don't have time to go do something. Yeah, yeah. So you just no, need I to agree. recognize, hey, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get stuff spoiled. What I feel is interesting about this is it's spoilery, but I feel like this meme of the I don't feel good I agree. has really taken off really quickly after the, the movie yeah. came out. And I guess it's, it's like it doesn't necessarily let you know. If you haven't seen the movie, you don't know necessarily what it's about, but it's definitely like the end of the fucking movie. Yeah, like somebody made a version of that with like uh, Loopy Lupe and Garbo mm, Man, I and I didn't understand the reference, but I knew it was being spoiled. But because I didn't understand it, it was fine. Yeah, somebody made a really funny joke today on Twitter that I really admired. Uh, I was got... it about it? Like, was it about your your phone and talking to your phone, like a funny little script you write? And then <laughs> no, that that's serious drama, buddy. The uh, the, the Fortnite where they have this crossover with Avengers that's happening. Oh yeah, yeah. And then they did this thing with a graphic of like. Thanos and one of the uh, Fortnite characters, and he's doing snap, and he even says snap in the background, and they just added an image to that, which was PUBG like slowly disintegrating and fading away. <laughs> I thought that was pretty fucking funny. That was pretty funny. I had to laugh at that. Um, but I was yeah, I, you I, called I, them basic. I got I got a little bit of grief for that. Yeah, Jeff. I got a little bit of grief. I, for that. I, you didn't like it? You don't think it's a cute little crossover? A lot of no, a, just, a lot know. of people play Fortnite. They're into that. I will say this. I think we're going to stream it tomorrow, try to get the gauntlet, see what happens. I actually like Fortnite. I play Fortnite. I'm not good at the building. That that kind of sucks. And I actually like the the PvE game, which we followed and talked about for fucking years. Yeah. I like that game a lot. Uh, but uh, it, do, it does, though, point something out to me, which is it's funny that Fortnite does have tons of skins and emotes and dances and everything else that are very referential or in some cases with some of the dances like literally just lifted mm -hmm. straight out of other things with like no credit or no acknowledgement until they get to Disney. And then they yeah. then suddenly it's like a partnership and a call out and everything like that. It's like, really, or is that Disney the only one who deserves that respect? Because we know that Disney will sue the fucking shit out of you yeah. if you tried to do something similar like that. I think also like the... 
Avengers franchise. It's like they have tons of co-marketing stuff that they do. Like the weirdest one to me is like this Geico commercial with the fucking lizard talking oh, to the yeah. talking to the Avengers. It's like Geico, the official uh, insurance of the Avengers. Like really? Where's Let me the, ask you a question. What do you do in that you're seeing a commercial? Because I feel like I don't see commercials. When I watch SNL. Like fucking, him, he I'll watches fast, basketball. I'll fast forward through them. I watch, SNL? I watch tons of TV. I see commercials all the time. You, yeah. can't, you can't help it because you Atlanta. watch sports. There's, well, there's a lot of like current TV shows that I watch. Yeah, yeah like I DVR stuff. The current stuff that I, I'll DVR and then I'll watch commercials that way. You know, or if I'm like watching it live, like if I don't want to wait for the, the thing that I'm... The cue to fill. I'm starting to notice with commercials and I'm starting to, seeing it, starting to see it more and more, which I really like. SNL has started doing this. They did it last year. NBA, uh, like the NBA with TNT is doing it this year, or maybe it's ABC, um, because the playoffs are split between the two, uh, where they start to do like, like branded commercials with their talent. Mm. Like, have you noticed that? Yeah, yeah. Like they're doing this thing for Ocean's Eight right now, where all these these people are trying to steal. If you don't know know it in in uh on ABC and ESPN, Jalen Rose is a commentator on their NBA games. And they're doing this whole thing in support of Ocean's 8 where they do these little commercial vignettes where they're trying to steal Jalen Rose's jewelry from him. Mm -hmm. That's fucking, it's not hilarious, but it's way funnier than a normal it's commercial. Better, it's better. And it's, it's great. At least somewhat engaging. Yeah, it's engaging and it's and it's infinitely better than a yeah. commercial. SNL did the same thing where they did a couple of branded commercials last year with SNL talent. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. I hope we, I hope they do that. I hope we see more of that. Yeah, well, I, I know three guys would be all about that. Um... So I hear we have the results ready. What are the results from what the Burger poll? I'm gonna guess that only. Oh, look at this! Fucking hammered. Yeah, it's, it's a three-person I mean, I, poll. I, 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 Fifty-one percent. We don't even need a runoff. I made my case. I I, I realized that we were in a competition. I don't even size. think we mentioned the burgers. I think they're just voting for who they like yeah. better. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> Good to know I'm third. I don't. What do we ever say about the burgers? We just said the names of the places. We didn't describe the burgers in any way. This technology sucks. It's Fuck. a ham. <laughs> You're up and down. You're all over the place on this. <laughs> yeah. No, I'm coming back around. Sucks. Man, I saw this documentary on the New York Times website, I think it was last week, about this guy who has lived on a cruise ship for the last 20 years. It was amazing. Did you see it? It was amazing. Happiest man in the world. He, call, he keeps calling himself the happiest man in yeah. the world. I'm like, you aren't, there's no way yeah. that you're the happiest man in the world. Fa See, he's just it's like a carnival cruise ship? It's a Royal Caribbean, I think. And he just like re-ups every... He's like, yeah, I guess on Because don't ships. they go into port to, mm -hmm. to... Yeah, he gets on another one. So that's a really dumb way to do that because there are luxury cruise ships that you can buy apartments on and live on. That they're like, I read, read about this like a year ago. There's a cruise ship that just travels around the world. And for as cheap as I want to say like 800 grand, you can get a room in it. I mean, there's all kinds of like fees to live there that make it way more expensive. Like mm -hmm. if you bought an $800,000 place, if you could afford that, you wouldn't be able to probably live there because they nickel and dime you and everything else. Of course. But it has like a little commissary. It has like stores and like a grocery, like a grocery store. And there are people that live 365 days a year just on this. And then so, they're like, this year we're going to go to Iceland. And they head that way. Mm -hmm. And then they... It seems awesome. So it's not eight hundred grand a year. It's eight hundred grand. It's you like eight hundred grand, or like that's for like the cheapest, shittiest one. But they had, they were in the millions too. If you want to get like a nice big two bedroom, like yeah. luxury one. But uh, yeah, and then there's these, there's these like super yachts or super like cruise ships that people just rich people live I found, on. I found one apartment ship. Yeah, the world residences at sea. Yeah, there are people who live at Vegas casinos. They just live in those massive casinos and those hotels. Well, a famous actors and actresses used I to totally live in hotels in Hollywood yep. all the time. Yep. Like, I, it was a thing to live at the Beverly Hilton. I mm -hmm. think the um, the W here downtown also has condos attached to it. They have residences, and they are fucking expensive. Yeah, if I, I, it's funny you say that because it's one of the places I looked. Yeah, me too. And I was like, <laughs> they, they have, And I will not be living there. Yeah. So, they also have a private saltwater swimming pool just for residences in so that hotel. I do want to point out, uh, Hidden Lemon in chat is saying only $800,000, LOL. Like, uh, yes. <laughs> It's we understand it's still ridiculously expensive. We're saying compared to everything else on that ship. Yeah, it's it's or if you're buying a house in California, for instance, eight hundred thousand dollars is a mid level house. Would you say in California? Is that the, I'll I'll say this because I just had this conversation. I was just in San Francisco for a week with the kind of funny guys, and uh, they're lamenting how expensive San Francisco is oh, getting. Yeah. They actually, Getting? I overheard a conversation where they were talking about how maybe, like, maybe they should just pick up and move to L.A. because it's so much cheaper to buy to live in L.A. than it is to live in San Francisco. And how they could all finally afford to buy homes if they just moved to Los Angeles. And Which, I'm not saying they're going to do that. I'm not trying to blow up the kind. They're, they're no, just no, having no, a no. conversation at lunch. So. Yeah. But 
I, I, I was sitting there thinking, like, I'm li literally listening to a conversation where a bunch of adult people in America are talking about how they're going to move to Los Angeles so they can afford to buy a home. Yeah. Because where they live is so much more expensive. Yeah. I, I want to in Los Angeles where you pay a million dollars for a I, trailer. I, I want to point out that Austin is cheaper than L.A. It is. Yeah. Guys. Yeah, come on, bring it on. Just come over here. Yeah, it is. I got, I, I got the space. Can you imagine all the chicken wings? You'd be like, like, what the fuck happened? Oh, oh I actually looked. That's one of the places I looked at. Yeah, it it's, uh, it's, 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 it's as expensive as it looks in that photo. It is. Jesus. I want to say, I want to say, I looked at that place and I was, I was looking at it and they, I said, well, how much is this place? And they're like, th this one goes for two million. I was like, <laughs> good day, sir. I will be leaving. Thank See ya. you. That looks. That one's four. That four! was about to say. <laughs> no, don't do it. You could buy it. five apartments on a cruise ship for that one. You'd be stupid. Well, Jeff's yeah. came with an indoor pool, so it's all good <laughs> in the living room. That, yeah. All right, let me see here. I'm going to do a quick thing for... I couldn't afford to buy my condo. Like, if it was for sale, there'd oh, be yeah. no way. So, to, to put it in perspective, I just did a, a, a amortization schedule on a um, loan of about at about 4% uh, for a $750,000 house. Just to put it in perspective for people who don't buy houses um, or haven't bought one in their life, uh, that's about 3500 bucks a month, $3,400 a month. Yeah. So, that'll give you a perspective, and then you're owning it as opposed to renting it, you know. And I think... Typical rent in but, Austin is about twelve. 12 you guys, tell me what twelve hundred is that? I in that range, right. I think I paid like three hundred a bucks a month. I for would my, say it's probably more like sixteen. Is it like sixteen days. now? Yeah. One bedroom for like nine. Yeah, right. You can. Wow. Yeah, Austin still got places. Still got some places, but it ain't cheap. It ain't cheap. That amortization that doesn't include property taxes or insurance. Though, insurance, right? right. Yeah. Those things or garden hoses. You know. <laughs> yeah. Property you, tax is ridiculous here. Property tax is ridiculous because you don't have income tax. Right, so you'd end up paying a hell of a lot more. That's what's going to end up, if I do buy a place, keeping me out of a condo is fucking homeowner fees. Mm -hmm. Like Homeowner fees, I don't know what yours, what yours are like, but I, the, I've been the average seems to be about $1,000 a month Jesus. at places downtown. You I've mean for like the, the condo yeah. Yeah, fees? Yeah, you got to yeah. pay all that upkeep for like pools and all that nice shit that yeah. you see. It's like you pay for that. Another yeah, piece of advice do. for someone buying a house? First question you should ask is, does this community have a homeowners association? Yeah. And yeah. is this house haunted? Really? <laughs> well, they do have to tell you. <laughs> Did you what, what? I think so. You're like, is this house haunted? They have to. They... I want to go look at houses. And also, has anybody ever been murdered in this house? You should always ask those questions, too. Do the walls bleed at night? You can ask that. Just look at me like I'm a fucking idiot. <laughs> yeah, you have to. If someone's been killed there or died in the house, they have to report that, right? I think so, yeah. yeah. What if it's if like natural ask. causes? Do they still have to report that? I but think. So? I don't know. It's a good question. I mean, I my old house was like 100 years old, so I assumed lots of people had died in it. I yeah, think you, probably. You take that up when you buy an older place. Hmm. I bought a place in Zilker years ago. I don't own that house anymore. Yeah. But it was like apparently like one of the first houses. It was a hunting lodge uh, that had been expanded over the years. But um, it was built in like the – it was built in 1932, and it was – I love that house. It was really cool. But the fucking realtor – Passed along this photo to me, hands to me. He's like, "Yeah, this is a house. It's like it's my house, but it's in the fucking woods, which was really weird for Zilker Park now. Mm -hmm. You know that it's because it's all surrounded by these other little houses, but it's just my house in the middle of these woods, and it's one of those old square photos because it's from like the late 30s or 40s, and it's real thick paper, and it's my fucking house, all these woods, and then this fucking kid on the front porch." Just into like one of those little like toddler outfits, and it's just this kid is just staring into the camera like this, like this. And it was like, I guess we had to hold still for a little mm -hmm. bit longer, so he's kind of blurry too. I was like, why the fuck did you give me this photo? I just like now all I'm gonna go to sleep and think about this fucking kid running around my house. So I got some information here from Patrick about disclosing deaths in houses. In California, sellers must reveal if a death in the home has occurred any time in the past three years, including death by natural causes, although certain types of death, like those from AIDS, cannot be disclosed. If a buyer comes out and asks about a death that occurred at any time, even longer than three years ago, the seller is required to provide a truthful response. In Alaska and South Dakota, only murders or suicides must be disclosed if they happened within the past year. What about ha what about ghosts? Why suicide? Doesn't say anything about ghosts? I don't know. Why suicide? It's, I mean, it's I guess... Like, it's like a murder. It's like a one-person murder? Yeah, one-person murder. Yeah. Solo murder. The uh, hmm. I guess technically there could be there could be things it's in your environment that could affect you to the point where you might commit suicide. Interesting. Yeah. So they yeah. might people would wouldn't want to withhold that information from mm. people. One of oh. the crazy. Oh. Are, you gonna, are you going to say the same thing? You I am? by the crazy Reddit story with yes. the, the post-it notes. 
the it's fucking nuts. the guy we've talked about it before. I'm sure. Have we talked about it? Probably. This guy started. He asked. He made like a, a post on Reddit asking people like, "Hey, what do I do? I think my landlord's breaking into my uh, apartment. Uh, I wake up and you know I'll come home and I'll find notes scattered around." The like someone's handwritten. It's not my writing. It says like I'm watching, and they have like personal information and, in yeah. them as well. He says I just don't know what to do. And one of the comments was like, "Hey, do you have a carbon monoxide detector?" And the guy was like, "No, let me go get one." He's like, "Oh, I have, I've been suffering from carbon monoxide poisoning for months." Yeah, he just didn't realize he was yeah, making himself. He told notes. the stories and like buried in the comments, one good dude saying, "Hey, I know it sounds mm -hmm. like people are like going, hey, dude, you might be delusional." Uh, or and then people were like, no, they're probably coming in. They're finding out personal information. Mm -hmm. And then some one guy wrote, "Hey man, um, what you're saying sounds like, like could be carbon monoxide poisoning. You should get your house tested." And uh, he went and got an alarm uh, a meter, and he's like, "Yeah, I have carbon monoxide in my house." So this guy, random dude on the internet, saved his life and just That's recommended crazy. he get a carbon how, monoxide. How, how alarm. would you know to, to recommend that? Like if I read that, I'd be like, I would never think like, oh, carbon monoxide. Completely fucking random. I he probably you know what it was. He probably had an experience with it. Uh, where they figured that out, and it's just like the one thing this guy knows. The best thing about the internet, especially Reddit, is that the everybody can come up with one brilliant comment, but then that filters up to the top because everyone votes it. So when you go to Reddit and you see something, the first comment is always a, the perfect joke for it. Mm -hmm. The perfect joke. It, uh, God, I hate that. I uh, I, like I reading, feel like oh, then that's way funnier than anything I can. I'm yeah, reading a horror, uh, like a haunted house book right now, a novel. It's the scariest book I've read in a long time. It's probably not haunted. It's probably just carbon monoxide. <laughs> I just ruined the fucking book. <laughs> Radon. Yeah. Radon doesn't happen it. here, right? I don't know. What that's that like a Midwest is. thing. Yeah. What is it? Uranium. It's like some kind of like just inherent underground radiation. Yeah. Yeah. But, but I guess maybe it's because we don't have basements. That we don't have to worry about it. Mm. That's and like the nuclear thing. ghosts. You got to worry about radon in your basement. Is that what it is? Okay. I think so. I don't know. I'm not from there. Are you from there? Let us know. Just type it in chat. Yeah. Do, we'll do the megaphone poll. What is radon? <laughs> do you have radon? Yes. No. no. What? <laughs> what is radon? Vote for Gus, Bernie, or Jeff. Can you hand me one of those? Who is, who is more radon? <laughs> uh, here, I want to read this other thing. Also, another reason not to buy, own a house. One, uh, you, also, to, you don't worry about shit like radon. You just tell your landlord, hey, I think I have radon, and they take care of it. I want to remind everyone, this episode of the Receive Podcast is also brought to you by eHarmony. If you've tried or you're currently trying to date online, chances are you've run into lazy text messages, dead-end conversations, or random matches that don't turn into dates. Mm -hmm. But have you seen the success stories from eHarmony? Real people are finding real matches with eHarmony. eHarmony takes steps that other dating sites don't do in order to find you a more compatible match. E-Harmony is built to help you find lasting, meaningful relationships, not a shallow hookup site. They've helped over a million people find their perfect match. E-Harmony uses decades of science, data, and psychological research to send you the right matches. Stop waiting and start your journey to a satisfying, meaningful relationship. It can be fun to play around with online dating apps, but when you're ready to fall in love with someone and have a meaningful relationship, there's one app that's built to bring you real love, and that's E-Harmony. Come see how E-Harmony can change your life. Go to eHarmony.com to get started. Enter code RTPODCAST at checkout. Thank you, eHarmony, for sponsoring this episode of the Rooster Teeth Podcast. Oh, I thought you were going to say something. I, I sent Jeff on a slightly different note. I sent Jeff this thing the other day. Uh, you know what I'm talking about. I found this website that uh, distributes public domain audiobooks for free. And anyone can record and submit themselves reading a public domain book for other people to download. So I sent it to Jeff and I was like, we should, uh, we should record a book. Mm-hmm. Like let's for the hell of it. Let's find like a public domain book. Like find some some obscure public domain book and just record it and put it up there for people to download. So I was like, what what would the book be? I actually have a book I'd like to do it with. Really, you already th thought about it? Uh, I thought about it after you sent me that because I used to. I went through a thing where I was reading a lot of public domain books on the Gutenberg project. Mm -hmm. And one of my favorite books I've read from there is a book called Therese or Queen, which is a French book from the 1700s about what was it called again? Therese, like Therese, like T H E R E S E, Raquin, I think is how you say it. It's R A Q U I N. And it's just about a, a woman who marries a clerk in France because she's poor and it's it's good for her family. And then she ends up having an affair and she and the boyfriend kill the husband. And then they're plagued with guilt and the guilt turns them against each other and drives them crazy, kind of. Mm -hmm. It's a really good book. I've read it twice. And uh, I would absolutely do. Um, I would absolutely do an audio recording of that, and it's public domain. They got it here. Yeah, 32 chapters. Yeah. Until so you do a recording of a book and you just put it up? For... Yeah, you just send it to them, and then they, they yeah. link it, or they put it for other people to download. <laughs> well, let me ask you guys this. I mean, this is something I keep bringing up, and every time we have, like, a creative pitch meeting is all the podcasts that we do, 
are all like personality based talk shows. Yes. Except for on the spot would be like our one exception. And Patrick's working on a cool new one that I think we announced from Pilot Week. Um, and I wouldn't call it a podcast though. But uh, no, no. But it falls in our broadcast department, so yeah. it kind of yeah. gets lumped in with everything else. I, would, I don't know if we call these podcasts anymore. We wouldn't use this word today. Podcast. This is just talk show. It's almost like an yeah, yeah. It's yeah. Bro- a broadcast show, right? We'll that's what we call it, broadcast show. now. Yeah. But 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 something there is a genre of podcasts that we've never done, which are narrative podcasts. Yeah. And there's some really great narrative podcasts, and I think you guys should. I mean, watching what you guys do on Heroes and Halfwits is. You weaving a tale. It'd be fun mm-hmm. to watch you guys do that, like uh, for a narrative podcast for Rooster Teeth. Yeah, I've always wanted to do something narrative. I'm always jealous of those, like the Night Vale and yeah. all of that stuff. Welcome to Night Vale is. Serial was huge. Yeah. Welcome to Night Vale is 50% garbage, 30% good, and 20% brilliant. <laughs> like, it's a real crapshoot when you, I mean, for me, but the good stuff is phenomenal in that podcast. Mm-hmm. But you just like, you gotta get through a lot of mediocrity to get to those brilliant moments. Or like, have you guys listened to My Dad Wrote a Porno? No, I haven't heard oh, of that. Oh, God. You haven't heard of it? No. Oh, it's huge. Um, I found his dad's like romantic writings, Bel- right? Belinda Blinked. Yeah. So it's about this British dude. Uh, or UK dude, he maybe he's Scottish. I, I'm not great with his accents. He found out that his dad wrote uh, an erotic novel called Belinda Blinked. So he got two of his friends, and he reads a chapter to them each week, and then they or each episode, and they publish it. It got so popular that the dad started writing more. So now they're on their third cool. season, and the dad's on his third novel, and. Uh, and it's, just, yeah, it's phenomenal. And it's the dude, he's like listening, he's like have to he has to read his dad's sex stories, <laughs> essentially. And there'll be stuff where like you'll get deep into it if you if you listen to it. You'll, I like, bet I will. Later in season one or season two, they'll even be points where they're like, he'll be describing like a desk. And they'll be like, That sounds a lot like the desk in your bedroom that you grew up with. And he's like, Yeah, I was hoping you wouldn't notice that. He definitely <laughs> is talking about them having sex on my childhood writing desk. And it's just like it's fucking his misery at hearing his dad's like proclivities like he loves to refer to breasts as that like he says like her her breasts swung like a sack of pomegranates <laughs> and, then <it's> like, <laughs> and they just go into like like they're like the dad's d- descriptive thought process i'd love to, like, to see a photo of the guy eating a pomegranate yeah, like... yeah. and uh it's brilliant and it's hilarious the girl it's a it's a, a two guys and a girl the girl is phenomenally funny and quick-witted and you would love it it's really really that good. sounds that yeah. sounds amazing. Yeah, I recommend it all the time. God, that's so cool. Talking about great narrative podcasts. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I will say that it's, it's awkward to read that. Going back to our dating conversation, it was years ago that someone we know, we think, I'm going to tell the story completely anonymously here. Okay, everybody? Okay. So someone we know was dating someone else that we knew, and the woman posted a, a text conversation anonymously, but it was very clear to all of us who they were talking to, and it was like, their sexy talk, like not sexy talk, but like the game, their yeah, game. Yeah. And I was like, I don't want to read my friend's <laughs> game. I just don't want to read that. Yeah. And so it's like, then we go back to the Tinder stuff. It's just like, yeah. <laughs> Had you forgotten about that or something? <laughs> it's just, it's too personal. Like it's this thing. And I do yeah. think it's like, guy, oh, it's I interesting. About that. Guys dating versus women dating, especially <laughs> today, is like, I mean, we've all known each other for. 20 years, 20 I mean, Jeff, years Jeff's plus. nothing is private to Jeff. I mean, everything's kind of like yeah. kind of out there. But really, it's like guys don't sit around and talk about like women they're with and what they're doing, you know, like locker room talk a little bit. They might talk about people they find hot or stuff like that, but they don't go into like unbelievably intimate details about someone they're with. However, on a regular fucking basis, I mean, any woman that knows any woman that you slept with knows everything about you in bed, pretty much. I agree. I yeah. agree. <laughs> I can point to. I watch a terrible, terrible show uh, that I don't recommend. I don't know why. Why? Millie and I got bored one night, so we were on Hulu. I found the show called Love Island. It's like it's kind of like the British version of Bachelor in Paradise or Temptation Island where they take a bunch of just stupid people from the UK that are gorgeous <laughs> and they smash them into a room or into a into a like in a like a mansion and they have to pair up and the couple that's together at the end mm. is the winner somehow it, the, the rules don't really make sense but then like so they have like six boys and six girls and they pair up and then they introduce a new girl in and that girl gets to pick one of the people and then it's just like it's just like a popularity contest of who's fucking who and who wants to stay in and they kick a person out each week and they bring in like two new dudes or whatever but you'll have the conversations where the girls are like like well what's his dick like you know and the guys are like oh my god she she said she she wants to go out with me again they're like high-fiving and hugging and stuff and the girls are like 
Yeah, I don't know. They, they get super descriptive, and the guys are just like so cute and adorable, <laughs> yeah. you know. And they're just like, "Oh my god, she likes me, she likes me." And the girls are like, "Yeah, I don't know. The other dude's more muscular. I feel like he's stronger, and <laughs> he's like he's taller, and he's he definitely has a bigger." He dick. lasted uh, about eight and a half minutes. Yeah, the other guy was like, like seven and, I'm like, and a half. So you heartless people. And Let me guy, get out my fucking logbook. The guys cry ten times more than the women in the show. It's like. <laughs> Yeah, it could be something that's uh, that's pretty shocking, but that's one of the reasons. Like that incident was one of the reasons why I I I I started dating Ashley. Like the month that Ashley and I uh, went exclusive was pretty much the month that Tinder came out. Hmm. But I was always like, hey, I would never do this stuff. I'm glad I don't have to date in the Tinder age because I'm just like convinced it actually happened to somebody on a. Uh, no, uh, Shay Carl got his DMs all posted. Oh and it's yeah, like, people fucking love reading that shit, dude. Yeah, they just love it. They, you know, and he had he went away for like a year after yeah. that. You, you know, his, yeah. his thing was tied with other stuff as well. But yeah, it's just like I just I'm I'm convinced that the moment you have one of those like intimate personal conversations with someone you don't actually know mm-hmm. online, that it'll get posted. You know. Yeah, I don't have. I like. It's weird. I don't think I have any. Any. It's 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 gonna sound like I'm gonna say intimate conversation. I, I don't have any super private conversation with anyone like via like Twitter DM or any platform. Like if I'm gonna talk to someone about something sensitive, I'm gonna talk to them face to face. Dude, I after my divorce five years ago, I made a commitment. I was no longer gonna have any more important personal conversations over text. Yeah, not gonna do it. It's and uh, just just from the security aspect alone for, put that aside it's just like there's too much open to misinterpretation yes mm-hmm. and there's too much lost in that like oh i should have had a comma there like now it reads totally different or it's fucked up like in my head i read this way but now they you know they think this and like i could see why they would think it you know it read that way it's like it's just it's a fucking nightmare one of the dumbest conversations i arguments i ever got to got into in my life was uh with jordan my ex and we were uh, talking about something on text, and I got home, and she was upset with me. And I'm like, what? She goes, well, you sent me this, like, nasty text. I'm like, they sent you a nasty text? Go, Look, it's right here. Look at it. And look at it. It's, it's, she's, like, she's like, are you going to be home soon? And I wrote, I'm on my way home right now. And I go, I just wrote, I'm on my way home right now. And she says, yeah, but you used a period at the end of it. I was like, "What? This is." A- I've gotten in trouble for using the period before too. Yeah, yeah, yeah for using Period's punctuation. Bad. Yeah, like you only use punctu- punctuation when you're pissed off. Apparently, apparently so. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I don't adhere to that. I think sometimes I do, sometimes I don't. I do. Apparently, I'm an I'm just an asshole all the time. Like Millie and I were walking down the street the other day over the weekend, and some guy outside of a bar goes, "Hey, I recognize your face." Uh, do I know you? <laughs> and I, I was like, I don't know. I, I guess I just got one of those faces, probably. I don't know. Have a good day. I walked on, and Millie was like, man, you were a real dick to that guy. And I was like, what? And she was like, you were really mean to him. And I was like, no, I wasn't. I wasn't at all. And I feel like I have that conversation with people all the time. We're like, why are you such a jerk to to Gary? And I'm like, I was just I, saying people, hi to Gary. People tell me that, too. I don't yeah. get it. Like I, like, I don't know if I'm in my own head. Or like, you guys are jerks. No, it's like, I didn't think I was. Like, I think I, I we thought, are. I thought I was being fine. And that's like, fine, like, no, fine if I am a jerk. I just, it's never on purpose. Right, very like, rarely you're is like, on you purpose. You were being an asshole. Like, no, I was, I thought I was being funny. Like, yeah. no, you were being a huge asshole. Like, oh my or, God. Or like, I just answered his question. It's like, it's the way you answered it. Yeah. Is like, that person mad at me? You know? Yeah. Like, I felt like I was walking around yesterday and I looked for that dude to apologize to him because Millie said I was a dick to him Saturday. I could, I didn't see him. And if I did, he would have been like, who the fuck are you? What are you talking about? Yeah. You know? But yeah, I, I, I apparently I'm I'm unintentionally a dick to people all the time, in person, let alone text. Text, forget about it. Yeah, yeah, crazy. Too much, like you said, too much can be interpreted in text. Too much, yeah, too much ambiguity. The other thing too is, um, when I was when I was dating, when I was like single for a while, and then started dating Ashley. Then there was this. People that would say, "Oh, I can't. I didn't know you were getting into a relationship. I would have gone out with you when you were single." In G- the situation that Jeff's in now, if you want to sleep with Jeff, now's your shot. You should make the effort <laughs> because <laughs> Jeff is. First of all, Jeff's gonna end up with somebody else uh, eventually, um, or I'll, I'll die alone. Or you die, alone. die alone. The other I've thing, I've already too, fucked up two marriages. I failed. I got twenty years of failure under my belt. Twenty-one. But in the, it's a weird thing to say, but like in your position because you are. A person who's on camera and who's a public figure, Ugh. it's actually harder for you to put yourself out there. It's impossible. It's harder. And so if you're interested in someone who's more of a public figure, a guy, you should let them know. 
you should actually, people should actually, you should let Jeff know that you want to sleep with him. <laughs> make, make, it, make it super <laughs> awkward, please. Yeah, please. Please, like, no, Bernie brings up an interesting point. I also don't know how to date. Like, but don't, do I that was... to, don't women get that enough? You know, uh, don't, don't like tell Barbara you want to date her. We, we know you do. Please. Yeah, it is, it is difficult. Also, it's difficult to navigate being in your 40s and dating. It's difficult to navigate post uh, a marriage and being a single dad and dating. It's difficult to date for the first time in 12, 13 years. Not having a respectable with, career. With all these technology mm -hmm. and like social media. None of that shit existed when I met Griffin, right? There wasn't mm -hmm. a dating app or there wasn't Twitter. There were no social platforms. People couldn't send me pictures of their dick on Snapchat or whatever, or their lady dick or whatever, really? you know? And so all that is new and weird and complicated to figure out. Also, I met Griffin and we fell in love right around the time RVB was taken off before it was a thing. So now I have that whole thing to mix into the, into the deal too, where like I'm at my core distrustful of everybody. I think. What What do you mean? I just, I just, I just, I just, I don't know. Well, you, you were, I mean, you were married in the first season of RVB. I mean, like she's in some of my old photos from. Yeah, yeah. no, I was married during my first season of RVB. I just mean like. Now we're established and we're a, a, a bigger commodity. Oh, I got you. And I'm just like at at my core, I'm just a little bit more apprehensive of people in general. Right. You know, like people don't realize, and I'm. This is not a complaint. This is gonna sound like a complaint. It's not a complaint. But we have a lot of auto, uh, amazing interactions with audience members every day and community members all the time. But a lot of those end with, "How do I work for you? I want a job." And you yeah. just get to the point where, like, I expect everybody to ask something of me yeah. all the time. To the point where after they do it for 10 years, you just, you expect every initial conversation with a new person to be transactional. Uh -huh. And it just kind of, it puts you in that frame of mind, whether it's going to happen or not. I just, it's always kind of in the back of my head. And so I'm always a little slightly leery of new interactions with people I don't yeah. know. And when you frame that around potential romanticism, I don't know. It's just, I'm still figuring it out. It's yeah. complicated. Well, I, I did most of my dating in L.A. I just went out to L.A. Mm -hmm. I, like, established myself out there, had my group of friends that's out there, and did most of my dating there. Um, it's a natural offshoot of what we do. You tend to run in those circles, and L.A. is a town where there's a lot of people who work yeah. in entertainment and things like that. So most of the people that I met and dated also worked in this industry. And it, on a regular basis, as things would naturally progress in a relationship, you know, from friendship to, you know, or meeting, and then you get, like, two days into it, and then you're going to ask somebody out— it, I had to have conversations of like, hey, just, uh, just for clarity here, are we like hitting it off on a romantic basis or are you excited oh, to maybe right. get a job at Rooster Teeth? Mm -hmm. You know, it's like one of those things. And you'd have to establish that. It'd be like, no, I really like you. Or they'd go, okay, first of all, you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But your company is awesome and I'd like to come work there. But it is, it's a whole level of conversation of not just being a public figure. You're also an executive where you just can't like go, you can't just hit on whoever you want to. You really can't. No. Yeah. No. You're not just go like, hey, I'll give this a shot. You're kind of cute. It's like, they're like, uh, no. And now you need to go to jail. <laughs> yeah. But it's, jail. Like, Jesus. We well, you know what I'm saying. It's like, it's, it, it could be a problem if you try to hit on somebody. You know, I, I couldn't or wouldn't. I, I mean, I'm so paranoid. What's that? About hitting on people and in general, like, I just, yeah, the whole thing is it's the whole thing is stressful and befuddling to me. But I'm lo I'm loving. I, I love hearing you talk about uh, about it. So please continue. <laughs> we get Jeff, Jeff. You're doing a great job of, of of saying things so I don't have to. <laughs> right. It, it, no, it's one of these things. So Jeff should. Everyone should hit on Jeff. Well, Jeff, uh, you want to sleep with him if you want to. Very sweet him. of you. But... Now's your fucking chance. Look at this. How could you not want to sleep with that? <laughs> I mean, there's a lot. There, there's a lot to hate there. There's, yeah. a, there's a lot to be disgusted by. I think I might never cut my hair again. Ever? I think you're just, I'm just, you're gonna just selling yourself more and more, dude. Give up. I got the beard going. The beard's I, looking good. I have. I, I haven't had my hair cut because I had this thing where I uh, Griffin cut my hair every every haircut I got for 13 years. Griffin did because she's talented and amazing at everything. And of course she could cut hair. Why wouldn't she be able to cut hair, mm -hmm. right? And so I got free, awesome Griffin haircuts for 13 years. Now I, I don't want to... I could probably call in that favor if I wanted to, but I don't... Probably not the most... Probably not the smartest thing to do, you know? And so I, I haven't figured out how to... Like where I get it. I, get, I don't have a place oh, to get it. Oh, get a Floby. I should get a Floby. Get a Floby. I should get a Floby. So I, I, I get scared stressed, to let else cut your hair. I get stressed out about having let's, my hair cut now, so I just don't do it. Let's 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 film it. Let's, let's until let's, it's like let's cut your hair critical. with a floby. All right, we can do that. I'm gonna cut my hair with a floby. Yeah, we'll we'll do and let's film it. And so now, and I was thinking the other day, I was like, I really got to get a haircut. I don't know where to go. I'm confused. I was in I was in New York. I thought maybe I'll get a haircut while I'm in New York. And I was just like, they have great haircuts in New York. I just I just I get when I get too stressed out about a dumb thing like that, I just turn off. I'm like, oh, that's a problem for 
tomorrow, Jeff. You too, Jeff. And, and then I thought, like, I'll just go like Jesus. I'll just do, like, Matt Bragg, and I'll just, like, fucking have shitty, long, ratty hair. From Jesus to Matt Bragg really fast. That's well, a wide-ass spectrum right there. Well, Matt Bragg's like, he wants to be Jesus. Does That's he? That's what he's going for. Yeah, you <laughs> really? yeah somewhere between Bare Jesus foot. and Mitch Hedberg. <laughs> uh. Yeah, I keep trying to grow my hair out. I've tried a number of different times over the years, and I keep trying to grow my hair out, and it's just I give up on it. Because I keep waiting for the moment when my hair is going to go down, mm. and it doesn't ever go down. It just continues to go up, mm. up, and that's it. And so I end up wearing hats like this when I'm trying to grow my hair out. Same. This is, yeah. When you see me wearing a hat, I will only wear a hat when I just, I can't, I, I just, my hair is a, a nightmare. And I won't get it cut, so I'll wear a hat. You won't see, like, you won't see me not wear a hat until I get my hair cut. Right. It's just all there is to it. <laughs> to what? I will you wear will this be hat wearing every a hat day until he gets a haircut. Until I, think I get my haircut. Yeah. Okay. There I, you go. I totally didn't hear haircut. Yeah. I heard something else. Sorry. Okay. Uh, yeah. And then I'm keeping the beard because I have. I'm getting so much gray hair. I like it. Yeah, gray hair is great. Right? I like. I love it. I think I it's like awesome. It I yeah. really do. I'm jazzed about it. Do you have any on your head, or is it just in the beard? It's mostly just the beard. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I haven't. It hasn't. Hasn't made its way up there yet. Mind if I cut mine shorter? Looks way grayer. Like when I keep my beard short like this, it looks super gray. And then my sideburns when they do it, but then like the, all the hair on the top of my head, I don't really have any. Gray in that at all. So I will say, you know what, as an aside, you know what, a great side effect of being Irish Jones's godfather is I just get like fucking awesome pictures of Iris. I, I just got this. I get them like five times a day it's, L- and videos. It's great, isn't it? It is really great. Yeah. It's I, so I love awesome. seeing when Michael uh, tweets photos of her in her little car. I know. It's so cute. The little, yeah. It's adorable. Yeah. You're showing it's me a remote control, earlier. dude. Yeah. I, I, yeah. You showed me earlier. That's, that's pretty fucking cool. I was wanted one of those cars when I was a kid. Never had it. Yeah. Yeah. So I when you see you. pictures of Iris, do you like you gotta be thinking about wanting to have kids? You're just no. so far gone. No, God, she's what's wrong so with you? cute though. Yeah, she's adorable. Don't you remember when uh, Becca had Clementine? Yeah, and it was just like whenever we go out to like eat or something, that, like that, I would just, like it, give it, her to me. It doesn't do anything for me. It, it really does nothing to me. Baby's head. You ever smell the baby's head? It's the best smell in the world. Why the fuck would I? No, <laughs> he's yeah, not wrong. It would be weird. I'm glad you said no. He, he's not wrong. <laughs> it is. A, it, yeah. No. Yeah. Babies are the fucking best, dude. No. Babies are the fucking best. Fucking. Screaming shit machines. I don't need that. All right, they so don't scream as much as you. If you're can. watching this podcast, you want to have a baby. Message Jeff. No more. I'm done having babies. No more babies, please. I had my one. That's uh, yeah. Man, Billy uh, Ramsey's the spe- one and only. Speaking of shit machines, uh, <laughs> did you guys see that weird ass story about that? There, there, it was a school in New Jersey. They kept finding someone was shitting on their school track every day, and they couldn't figure out who it was. On the track? Yeah, on the, like, the track at the high school. <laughs> so they, you know, they went through security camera footage, and they found out it was the superintendent of a different school district. Is that true? Yeah, he was going to this other district's high school to shit on their track like every morning. Had they just beaten him in a track meet or something? I don't know. It's like... The the, the 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 person who has been accused of this and taken into custody has like has issued no statement. He's been put on leave from the school district. Can I ask you a question? Like, wh- what motivates you? What what happens that you're shitting? Like that's your life choice. You're the superintendent of a school district. You're like, well, it's five thirty in the morning. Got to go shit on the school track. Can I ask you a question, Gustavo? Hmm. Have you ever in your life taken a vengeful shit? I don't know what that means. Yeah. Like that, uh, or like a like a vengeful shit, like on a high, like, like in public? A high school no. track meet, or like in somebody's fr- on somebody's front porch, no. or like in the like they parked in your parking space, or like an upper decker. Like, have you ever used I don't think so. feces as a revenge tool? No, have you? No, it's got to be okay. a genetic Wait, thing, right? I thought you were gonna uh, you're gonna say you had. All I right, I'm gonna say no. I r- fully recognizing that I've had a lot of life. And it's possible I did, and it'll come to me later. But I don't you think so. You would remember that, dude. I don't know. Hey, I, I don't remember conversations what? Gus and I had this morning. Yeah, he tried to tell me the same story again. Twice, <sighs> I tried to tell him the, uh, two different stories that we'd already had. My, <sighs> have you ever done a revenge shit? No, no. The memory thing started driving me crazy. I've had revenge pisses though. Go ahead. I think there I was have. this dude. There was this dude I didn't like. He was my roommate in the army. I don't want to say his name because he might still be alive. But uh, but <laughs> you he just was narrowed from, it down. He was from fucking Utah. I'll tell you that. <laughs> And uh, it down more. he was Mormon and uh, he was a, he's a Weasley little fucker. And uh, I shared a room with him and my friend Noe and he got, he graduated journalism school and he was going on to his duty station. And so he went to bed and he had to get up at like five in the morning to leave. And so everything you get in the army goes into a duffel bag, right? <laughs> You get, two, you get two duffel bags in basic training. This is the way it was in the 90s. I don't know if it's still the case. And he piled everything he had into his duffel bags, and then he went out drinking with his friends or whatever. And at, like, I got up at, like, 2 in the morning to go to the bathroom, and he still wasn't back yet. Mm-hmm. 
and I fucking hated this dude, so I thought, how can I get revenge on him? So I took a bunch of stuff out of his duffel bag, and I pissed in his duffel bag, and then I put it back in, and then I did it to the other duffel bag, and then I pissed in his shoes for fun, too. <laughs> Just a little bit. Just a little bit. Just no, a little that's bit. fucking weird, dude. That's really... I was 18. I know, but that's like, there's some stuff you just like know not to do. That's really fucking weird. Baby. That kind of t- <laughs> that kind of makes me think of like, the, the thing I've never understood is when people, and I feel like this is a common story where they're like, so-and-so got so drunk that they started pissing in the corner or they started pissing in the closet. Like I piss in backyards at parties sometimes. At least you're pissing in a backyard. Like I, you're not I, pissing inside a house. I yeah. had a friend one time, we were in the army, station of Fort Hood, we went down s- Surfing at Port Aransas, he we all got drunk. It was back when you'd like five dudes would share a hotel room for twenty yeah. bucks a night, you know, because you're broke. Dude. And uh, and that's also it's where the party is. And uh, he took all of our wallets and he put them in a corner in the wall, in the corner of the wall. And he we woke up because we heard water, and he was just pissing on all of our wallets. Yeah, that's... totally blackout drunk, <laughs> yeah. had no idea what he was doing, just pissed all over I like, four like, wallets. Is there a, like something? Is there a type of person who does that? Like. Why is it that some people do well, that? Well, he's drunk. My buddy but still, did some that. people do that. I've never done that when I'm drunk. Did I tell you the? All right, I got another army story. <laughs> this is a great one. You probably told you this years ago. You might not remember it. The same place where I pissed on. I almost said his name. The guy's shoes in his two duffel bags. Oh, we had it. We shared a bathroom with uh, with suite mates, right? And uh, I had a whole issue where this fucking dude had w- would get drunk and he would stand in the bathroom and spin in a circle and piss and then just cover the whole room and piss. That was the whole thing. He got kicked out. Of the, that dude got kicked out of the army. But there was another incident where this other guy named Joe. Uh, I, I'm surprised I remember all these people's names. I heard screaming at like three in the morning, four in the morning one night. We got up. We ran into the room. There's a dude on the ground laughing and another guy kicking him. And like, we turn on the lights trying to figure out what's wrong. And Joe's screaming. And he's like, "I'm gonna kill him! I'm gonna kill him!" We have to pull him off the dude. The dude's just on the ground laughing. He doesn't know why. I look at Joe. I, they smell urine. Joe's covered in piss. <laughs> Found out the dude. Joe was asleep. The dude came home drunk as piss one night. Drunk as uh, night. drunk as piss. He comes in. He thinks it's funny. He just stands over Joe and just starts pissing on his head while he's asleep. And so Joe wakes up, pummels the dude, gets him on the ground. The guy's laughing too hard to control himself. And he's just like wailing, kicking him in the ribs. And we had to like break it. Everyone got covered in piss. A lot of piss in the military. Apparently. Yeah. I yeah. had no idea. Yeah. But just being nice. That Joe, Joe Biden, grew up to be a president, <laughs> I'd say. True. No, but I, uh, well, I had the same thing. We'd sleep in uh, hotels rooms would pack as many people in when I was yeah. in college. And we had a similar story. My buddy, guy knew Whitey. He got up in the middle of the... Uh, Knight was drunk and pissed in another guy's suitcase. So <laughs> he had to wear like one thing of clothes for the rest of the week in, in South Padre Island. Oh which is, awesome. if you're gonna get, spring break is time to get away with that. But the then I don't know if it was the, I think it was the next only year. Have seen your frog shirt. <laughs> <laughs> I think it was the next year. Uh, we also packed in another hotel room. Some of us had to sleep on the floor. And I men, remember my buddy Utterback, everybody's just called by their last names. He, uh, we had one pillow for us, so we could sleep next to each other and be on the pillow. <laughs> so one pillow did, for two guys. For two guys. Okay. But we determined it was safer for us, or our, our reputations, if we slept, <laughs> like, this way, with my body going this way and his body going this way, we both slept on the pillow. Like okay. That. And then I wake up in the middle of the night. <laughs> I wake up in the middle of the night, and my fucking face is all wet. <laughs> oh. And I remember, I remember Whitey pissing in the suitcase. I'm like, somebody fucking pissed on me. I was so mad. I got up. I went in the bathroom. I was <laughs> covered in blood. Waterback got a nosebleed and soaked the entire pillow. And I'm covered. Oh in, my god! In, in, <laughs> I thought you were gonna say it was so much worse. Oh my god! So much worse, so much worse than getting pissed on. Worse. I'm covered in blood. And it was so disgusting. That pillow was just like a, a nightmare. A nightmare. Oh my god! Uh, and it, I remember it was one of those. Uh, it was an old pillowcase. <laughs> a cat, a cat, a cartoon cat wearing like slippers on it. Who the fuck even had this pillow? And it was my buddy Jim. And he was mad about his pillow getting <laughs> ru- ruined. And he goes, "I brought this spare pillow. Oh no, it's fucking ruined with all this blood." <laughs> I bled. Oh I bled so much yesterday. <laughs> Meanwhile, I look like fucking Carrie at the oh, prom. Gross. Oh. <laughs> I'm gonna call him to see if he remembers that story. <laughs> Been covered in blood. Um, what happened to you yesterday? Why'd you bleed? Or day before yesterday? I uh, I just broke a glass at, in the Admirals Club at JFK. Oh, I read this like I tried to cl- on Twitter. Like I, I sat down. I went. In, I, I sat down. I got a Diet Coke from the bar and I, in a pint glass, and I sat down. I sat, sat next to this old dude. I was watching CNN. He had a beer, and 
I went to grab a table to move it over from my laptop because I was going to do some work. And I went over to grab my Diet Coke, and he had moved his beer in front of my Diet Coke. Mm. So I hit it just enough to knock it into my Coke. And something about the angle, the way they hit, it smashed both of the glasses, the mm. pint glasses. And it just shot beer and Diet Coke all down his leg and in his shoe and no, in man. his lap and glass went everywhere. And he was like very rightly pissed off. And I'm like, oh, my God. And I freaked out and I just dove at the glass to try to pick it up to get it away from him. I sliced my finger over right here. Where it was just like I could Jeez. see just white shit pulling out of it. It was and it, and it was like. <laughs> so I'm like, oh, I'm trying to take care of this dude and I'm bleeding everywhere and I can see that I need stitches and um, so I ran to the bar to see if they had like a towel and they gave me band-aids and I realized I'd bled all over the bar when I came back and I started to clean it up and I look and the lady's like windexing everything and they're all freaking out and I realize I'm dr there's like a trail of blood and the lady bandages me up we like disinfect me and we put a band-aid on I go back and I continue cleaning up because it's a monumental mess and I go back and I and uh, I get uh, like another round of paper towels and I'm cleaning it up and I'm dropping glass off and I look and this thing is black with blood again and the band-aid just falls off. So we have to do it again. And I it was three band-aids in before we got it to stop bleeding. And uh, eventually I had to buy, I bought the old guy a beer and we became friends. But um, but yeah, it was like, there was just like a trail of blood going from the bar to my chair and then all over the ground and then all over the poor man's leg. I bled all over his leg and then back to the bar. It was hideous. Do you remember one time <clears throat> years ago, might have been like in the, maybe before Rooster Teeth, you and I went downtown and we were at that real shitty bar, the library, and they have like the bar. and the punch club type? Maybe, yeah. Okay. And then to the side of it was like that big staircase that went up and then went left and went right. And uh, we were like, all right, this, we got a drink. We were like, you want to go upstairs? Yeah, let's go upstairs. We walk up to the stairs and the stairs, it's like out of the shining. They're just covered in blood. It looks like the elevator doors have opened and there's just blood running down them. Blood. And we were like... Yep, let's uh, let's not go upstairs. Do you not remember that? I vaguely do. It was fucked up. Like to be at a bar downtown, it's like, oh no, the stairs are just covered in blood tonight. Don't go upstairs. Blood when you see it oh. is a shocking color, and it must be something evolutionary that yeah. we react to blood. But when you see actual blood, it it kind of freaks you out mm -hmm. when you see it. We saw it in Leicester when we went there for uh, uh, something. There was some pub, and there was literally a puddle of blood. Outside of a pub because somebody had had a fight there mm -hmm. and it was just like yeah seeing that color was just nuts You and I experienced that in <laughs> San Jose once do you remember that yep. night? That uh, was the was half that black half Korean Cinnabar night. Cinnabar yeah Cinnabar oh, you were with him that night the half black half yeah. Korean night. Yeah. Yeah, it was the two of I us love that story. It was great uh, here, let me read this. I was great because I got to watch it and I got to watch how uncomfortable Gus. <laughs> well, you know, Gus having to navigate an odd social situation is always the best. So I got, I got this. I had a front row seat for it. We should probably explain that too. The half black, half green thing is people like to tell Gus what race he is. Yes. People, want, people want to categorize me for some reason. Unprovoked. Yeah. Unprovoked. Like, ah, oh, you're Saturday. And Arabian. it was so bad because you had to go to the, you had to go by, by two pool tables to get to the bathroom. Gus and I were both walking back toward the bathroom. And as he's going, a guy literally takes a pool cue and stops his progress. <laughs> Like, Gus bumps into the pool cue, and the guy's like, hold on a second. Before hold you up, go, buddy. I got this. And Gus's like, what? <laughs> and he's like, I got it. I, I'm, I'm, I can I'm good this out. This. I'm good yeah. at this. I get it right every time. And Gus is like, I don't know what you're talking about. And that's when he, he goes, half black, half Korean. And Gus goes, excuse me? And the guy goes, you're half black, half Korean. And Gus goes, no, no, I'm, I'm Hispanic. And the guy's like, no, nope, no, nope. half black, half Korean. I know these things. And Gus had to convince the guy he was Mexican. Remember, remember he had his friend there who was, yeah. uh, who was uh, Mexican. And uh, he goes, hey, this guy says he's, uh, he's Mexican. I go, hey, what's up? He goes, hey, what's up? Yeah, I guess Mexican. <laughs> <laughs> I never remember that. But that's funny. <laughs> here, let me read this thing here. Uh, I want to remind everyone this episode of Rooster Podcast is also brought to you by Hims. So check this out 66% of men start losing their hair by age 35. That's two out of every three dudes on earth. That's a lot of people. If you have this problem, check out 4hims.com, a one stop shop for hair loss, skin care, and sexual wellness for men. Hims provides medical grade solutions, real doctors who offer quality generic equivalents to name brand prescriptions to keep your hair where it belongs. There's no waiting room, no awkward doctor visits. Just save time and your hair by going to forhims.com. Answer a few quick questions. Doctors will review and prescribe a solution for you. Super convenient, saves you a lot of time. Uh, you can order now. Our listeners get a trial month of Hims for just $5 today. Right now, while supplies last, you can see the website for full details. This would cost you hundreds if you went to a doctor or pharmacy. It's so easy to use Hims. Go to forhims.com slash rooster. That's F O R H I M S dot com slash rooster. Forhims.com slash rooster. Big thanks to, to Hims for sponsoring this episode of the Rooster Teeth Podcast. So I read this crazy headline the other day that had an even more 
fucked up statistic buried inside the article. Uh, the headline was, man trying to take selfie dies after being mauled by bear. <laughs> man trying to take a selfie. So let me try to figure out the story. So the dude went somewhere where there was a bear. I'm assuming it was probably, he was taking selfies, he's not in the woods. He's probably at like a zoo or somebody who owns a bear thinks he can take a selfie with it or gets too close to an enclosure and bam, it gets eaten. I bet it's one of those drive through like animal safari things. Neither. This dude's with his friends coming back from a wedding and they're driving and there's a bear on the side of the road. Wow. Uh, so he gets out and decides he wants to take a selfie with a bear. And this was in India and the bear mauls him and kills him. Bears in India? Yeah. I didn't know. It was surprising bears in Russia, too. so they're connected. So, uh, so I'm reading the article and there's, there's a sentence in there. It, like they, they draw no attention to it. It's just part of the article. The, the sentence that caught my attention was, India had the highest rate of deaths linked to selfies for the last two years. Between March 2014 and September 2016 was 60% of all deaths taking place there. 60% of all selfie Wait. deaths happen in India. Well, there's a lot of people in India. There's one third of the world. Li uh, no, one third lives no. in India and China yeah. together. There's a billion people in India, right? Yeah, a billion people. That's a lot of people. Of the 127 reported selfie deaths in that period, 76 of them occurred in India. God, I'd say I've been to India. There's a lot of shit in India that wants to kill you. I just think it's just it's incidentally like people are taking selfies at that point in time. Like Australia, shit wants to kill you too. But I feel like you got to go seek that stuff out. You know, yeah. you could. You ever see those videos of people on uh, in India and they're like on the roof and they're looking down a hole in the oh. roof and all of a sudden a fucking cheetah pops out yeah. and attacks no. everybody? Oh, it's amazing. Well, remember but, we saw that one where it was like years ago where it's like there's a leopard outside an apartment building. Yeah, it's like the guy's checking his mail or and a and leopard attacks him. Have you seen the ones where dudes are just waiting for their train and monkeys attack them? <laughs> like would come up and steal their shit while they're just yeah. like waiting to go to work with their briefcase. Yeah, it's fucking nuts though. Yeah, I mean, you you cannot predict or control wild animals. Wild animals, it's just baffling to me. So this guy got killed by the bear? This guy got killed by the bear. Yeah, and his happen. friends filmed it. Yeah, that'll happen. His friends filmed it? Yeah, they were, I mean, there's a fucking video in this thing. What are they gonna do? They're Sounds not gonna, like they're not gonna attack the bear. Yeah. Right, yeah, yeah. The, I guess they're in a car, they can hit the bear with the car. Yeah, yeah. I put that it's like, they're all together. And then, who is this? This The forest ranger said that the person died on the spot. He added, the bear is being treated for its injuries. So yeah, like, people what? give a, people give a shit about the animal. Yeah. Right. So yeah, not not only did that happen, but like the bears in the the bear hospital, and they're they're taking care of it. I, I would I, never. You know, I less, would never do that. I'm I'm less outraged by this, mainly because when people do stupid crazy stuff, the the thing that makes it interesting is that it's dangerous, right? So mm -hmm. there is a component where a certain amount of people have to either get hurt or killed voluntarily, you know, essentially, in order to keep that stuff kind of interesting. I don't like stuff where. Uh, people take selfies with baby dolphins and take them out of the water, oh, and the yeah. baby fucking dolphin dies. That I don't, I don't like that. That that upsets me. But at the same time, I am not one of those people who puts animals values their lives more than people. I think people are the most important. And when you know a dog gets put down because it attacks people, I'm like, okay, yeah, don't. Yeah, that dog shouldn't sucks, attack people. But the, yeah, yeah, it's like that's you know to attack or kill a person unprovoked, essentially. Yeah, that's that animal's probably gonna go. Yeah. You know? Uh, and uh, it, it's always weird to me when falls in that category, though. or when we see like again, I'm watching TV, so I see commercials. When I see a commercial, it's like, oh, you know, help this animal. You can donate twenty dollars a month, and you know, you can you can make sure these animals survive. It's like, why don't we donate money to make sure people have clean drinking water? Yeah. Or why don't we do something to help people? You know, why is it that's like, oh, I, again, I appreciate that you're trying to save whatever endangered animal, but there are people. I read the other day, 1.5 million people a year die from diarrhea. Because of a lack of access to clean water. Yeah. Like, how fucked up is how that? How many people? 1.5 million people a year That's die from that. That's fucking ridiculous, I think it was dude. like 2,300 people a day or something. I, I don't remember the math. But it was a ridiculous amount of number. And really it's probably very young number. people, too. Right. And it's mostly Meanwhile, yeah, Bernie children. can't even turn his fucking toilet off. Yeah, I know. I gotta go and jiggle the handle. <laughs> Jesus Christ. He doesn't even, he's burning 1,800 bucks a month. He doesn't even give a shit. I gotta reduce by the city. <laughs> it's fine. It was, it was $1,800, but number all said and done. But uh, sometimes you gotta. I, I mean, like, I made the decision at that point in time. I am no longer be a landlord. Yeah. It was like I think my discussion with Ezra uh, was, "Hey, uh, yeah, I went over and like jiggled the handle and everything." He's like, "Oh, he goes, give me the invoice." I goes, "I'll talk to the city. I'll take care of it." And I was like, "Okay." And he goes, "And I'm I'm just gonna move out." <laughs> I was like, "Okay, man, that's for the best." And he, I think he was gone like six months later. Yeah. So yeah, don't be a landlord if you're not someone who can be a landlord, and also it's like, can pay attention and deal with it. Don't rent to your friends. You rent to a bunch of your friends. You rented to Gavin at one point, right? Well, I mean, to rent to Gavin would imply that he paid me rent. 
Yeah. Did he not? Gavin lived for free in my house for a long time, <laughs> off and on for nine, ten years. Oh, nah, he paid. He paid. Decade. He paid on occasion. He gets all bent out of shape when I say he didn't pay. There were instances where he paid. Occasionally. Occasionally. It's probably the, the best deal ever. The thing that I'm pissed about <laughs> is when we put the second floor on. We all moved out of the house for a year. We went and lived in another house for a year, rented a house, and then at the tail end. <clears throat> We realized that the studio didn't have a bathroom, and I thought, how much extra would it be to put a bathroom in? And then we started, how much extra would it be a bathroom in and a kitchen? And what if we turned the studio into an actual livable space for Gavin? And so I went to him and I said, hey, it's going to be X amount of money. It's going to cost me so many thousands of dollars to do this. At the rent you almost pay, at, at the rate you you should pay rent, it would take two or three years for me to recoup that money. Can you assure me that if <laughs> I sp spend X amount of money? You'll live in the studio for two or three more years. Cause I don't have any interest in renting it out outside of you. Right. This is a friend thing. I'm not looking to be a landlord and have a stranger in my backyard. Just I pity you. And you're British, so you need all the help you can get. Do you will you, do you think you'd live here for another two or three years if I spend so many thousands of dollars putting a bathroom and a kitchen in for you so you have a little bit more autonomy and uh, a more livable space? And he goes, Yeah, of course, absolutely. And I was like, Okay, great. Paid the bill, did it. Did all the work. Four months later, he moved out. <laughs> <laughs> How Gavin? Yeah. And now you've come to find out that project is the untreated wood. And you're dealing with it all these years later. And that problem, <laughs> that project was the untreated wood that they're dealing with so many years later. It, the gift that keeps on giving. Yeah, that was all being redone. Yeah. So we're uh, we're wrapping up soon, but I wanted to introduce someone before. Uh, oh. Before we. Is it me? We head out. Yeah. It's Hi, you. everybody. I'm Bernie. Uh, I work at the company. We have a. He's not back there. We have a, a new podcast producer that we've worked uh, with quite a bit in the past uh, who just started last week. This is her first time sitting back in the control room working on the podcast. I'm kind of vamping because we're moving the camera. Um, it's someone. Yeah, but you can't vamp and say you're vamping. That ruins the whole. How's yeah, everyone doing tonight? <laughs> doing, one of those? doing good. Can we set up a poll? Are you doing good? Not so good? Let us know. Uh, it's Eric. Uh, Eric Bador. Hey! Thanks for wearing the uh, dark t-shirt and baseball cap uniform, apparently. Oh, I heard that that was the only way to get on this podcast, so I <laughs> dressed up today. Hey, we I like the oh. coordinated, too. Sorry. What's that? He's got the green and black shirt, green and black hat. Yep, didn't know that. No, oh, they're not no, matching? No, you knew it. I nope. thought they were part of a set. Nope. Oh, wow. Yeah, it's a set of companies I used to work for. <laughs> Did you, work at, you worked at Razor? Yeah. Did you get any free stuff? Yeah. You got the hat. I got it. <laughs> Have you seen this nice hat? Yeah. That's what yeah, they're known sweet. for. People people think it's a computer company. It's a hat company. I got yeah. a I got a Razer wireless headset, probably one of the best things I ever purchased for my PC. Fantastic. Best, best thing ever. It's great. What's it called? Do you know? The wireless headset? Yeah. Let's say Man of War. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. Hey, why man, why I they fire there. you? If you Just know so, so much. you know, I'm working here now. I'm good at my job. So <laughs> you know the names of products and yeah. everything? You can name every show. That's really we make. all I need. He can so. name this the Rooster Teeth Podcast. Yeah, that's right. That's, I'm, it's right there. I'm gonna be good at this. How long have you been here, Eric? Been here in Austin or been here? Been here at Rooster Teeth, working at Rooster Teeth. Uh, a, a week. Last Monday was my first day. You, you, oh, I guess I've been out of town. I was about to say, you've been here a week. <laughs> you <didn't say laughs> you, you were gone. You were talking about getting hands cut up. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's true. I was here all last week. Were you? Yeah. I was here, too. No, I don't know yeah, we had lunch. Not. Yeah. You, you guys had ladies, lunch? You, Where'd you guys go? Did you go to Mighty Fine? Or did we, you go no, to we were going to go to Turntable, but they don't open until 3. Yeah. Like a turntable. It's, a, it's where House New, Pizza used to be. New Pizza Place. Oh. So we went over to Eastside Pies. Yeah, yeah. We, oh, ended okay. up, uh, we ended up going to Turntable. Me and, uh, House me and Pizza. Where is that? I, I haven't yeah. had lunch. It's over an airport. You, is it an airport? I haven't. Years. When was the last time we had lunch? You haven't asked me. Eric said, you, you want to go get lunch? Hey, Bernie, you want to go get lunch? Well, let's not interrupt this conversation here, Eric. <laughs> Eric, what are you going to do? What's the thing you're going to do for the podcast? I'm the podcast, uh, podcast producer. So what does that mean? Whatever you need, I'll get for you. I need a better co-host is what I need. Can you get yeah, that? Well, that's, we'll get Jeff well, sorry. Wait, 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 if, we you, won't if you're Jeff waiting back for, for Gus to send time. you an invite, you'll be 350 podcasts. Right. Without being on it. Well, I get some, I'll get. i save on my birthday my Mighty Fine coupon. Oh, and then I'll just wait. We can go. Until the day after Gus's birthday, and then I'll go to Mighty Fine and hang out all day. There you go. And then I'll just say I went to lunch with Next Gus. February. <laughs> Next I'll pencil we'll you go. in. So were you were you living in San Diego? Before? Yeah, yeah. Made made the move out here. I don't want to dox you or anything big old, like that. Big but. old drive, and I'm out here. I'm out of doors for a little while, then moving into a place, and I'm here in Austin. The weather's miserable, but it's all right. You got to do the drive and then do the drive again. And just wait, dude. I feel like we've got too many Eric's around here. What's though. what's miserable about it? Miserable about the drive? No, the weather. The weather? The humidity. Okay. Yeah, I hear that. I'm, I'm from Southern California, Wait, man. We don't have any. You live to the ocean. Like the ocean's right there. There's no humidity. Dude, San Diego man. has perfect weather. Oh, it's perfect killer. Weather. I didn't know until I left. Yeah. 
I messed up. You must be so happy to be out for Mega 64 at this point. Right? Yeah, they gave me a shirt and they kicked so, my ass out. So, oh, really? Yeah. They Finally paid you. <laughs> Did, do you think they've noticed you're gone yet? No, not yet. <laughs> Did you tell them? Yeah. Well, I think Derek knows. Sean will probably think I'm still doing the podcast. Soon. Yeah. <laughs> that'll be. That'll that, be that. Now, is this going to cause beef? That we hired Eric oh, do from, we got beef with Mega sixty four? Well, it depends. Did we clear this? Did we, did do you say, want beef? I don't know. I didn't ask anyone. I didn't ask anybody. Who hired you? Who did uh, hire you? Patrick? Really? You did Patrick? Yeah. All right. On purpose? You knew? Yeah. He. <laughs> <laughs> I've been here a week, and that's the response. That was, so. that was already pretty dejected. Yeah. So we didn't we didn't reach out to Mega sixty four at all. No. Were you gonna do like a like a make good kind of like Sopranos thing or well, what? Well, you do like a thing where in business where and I did this when whenever we hire someone who's this established is... somewhere else, as you're clearly an established tab talent in the industry, mm. you reach out to where they are and you say, hey, just so you know, Eric's coming. He's moving to Austin. We figured. Mm. Listen, someone of the care, the quality of character of Eric moves to Austin. We kind of have to give them an offer, an offer to come work at Rooster because mm -hmm. we would hate for them to come to Austin. We wouldn't offer them. So we're gonna reach out and tell you that, like, you know, it, make sure. Not that that's okay with you, but just like just giving you a heads up. I understand. And I, I've, I've actually done that in the past. I've actually had someone said, I, I would hope you please don't do that. I remember that, yeah. I was like, what the fuck? They probably would have said, call. please don't do that. But Maybe we, we should have at least let's, traded somebody. Yeah, like, we could have been like, like Tyler. Oh, let's send Tyler Coe and an employee to be named later. Oh, oh, no, no, whoa, whoa. No, Ty, you, Tyler Do you think he's worth Tyler and someone? Dude, Tyler Coe's going to like bench press those guys. Like Tyler's pretty good. He would whip him in shape. Well, not all of them. A lot of them. <laughs> Some of them. Listen, I'm not. Come on, <laughs> dude. The uh, the video, the video that Mega Sixty Foot Four put out like three weeks ago, uh -huh. the Black Panther one? was so fucking brilliant. It might be one of the perfect internet videos. And you can look it up. It's, I think we might have mentioned the podcast yeah, we that did. week, which is uh, why God. isn't there a white oh, panther? Yeah. Why, why no white panther? Why no white panther? That's it. God, what a fucking funny those video. kids. Those kids minus Eric are so funny. <laughs> Those, God, I love the those kids are in their mid thirties. I know they're still kids, dude. I love those collaboration videos we did a few years back at Rafael Bonato. Those were like eight years ago. Yeah, where we did the what was it? What, what do we call it? Starry Night or whatever? Where yeah. we had like the two different stories from different perspectives. Uh -huh. like one was with me and one was with Rocco. I it was it was really really cool. Yeah, I I <laughs> why don't we do that again? That was like, so why don't fun. we do that? I don't know. I don't know. You want me to call them? I mean, they're probably available. I mean, you burn that bridge, right? <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah. They, no, this is a busy time of year, isn't it? They're going to the E3. I just yeah, ran yeah, into them at yeah. uh, PAX East, East not too long ago. Well, we've worked for fucking 15 years, and I think we've, we've tried our best. You know, you have your whole Let's Play network and everything. Yeah, Mega, Mega 64 has a level of industry credibility mm -hmm. that we fucking dream of. I know. Like, they get invited to GDC to be the host of GDC and, like, make videos and... He's like, he's they made a, that video us. with Reggie fils May. Yeah. 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 Swear he just uh, hit us up and he's like, hey, I'm doing a Kickstarter. Will you guys do videos for me? And it's like, yeah, sure. What cool. are we doing? What are we, what are we yeah, doing what wrong? Fuck? Also, Reggie. you can't say us anymore, motherfucker. I know. You work sorry. Here, I got to yeah. get used to that. They're dead to Them. you. Sorry, boss. Yeah. It's all right. Look, he's sweating. It's not just, just the humidity now. Also, I'd, I'll, I'll thank you not to wear that shirt here anymore as well. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Jeff has an entire line of clothing that you can pick from. Yeah. Oh, perfect. You, huh? get, you, get a, you get one discount a year. Wow. Right. He does take you to lunch. Did he take you to, he went to where? When we went to lunch? Yeah. Uh, we went to Eastside Pies. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Did he have a coupon from his birthday? No. 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 Did he make you pay? Yeah, paid, what was that? What the fuck? <laughs> get the hell out of here. All right, let's wrap hey, this up. Do you want to sleep with Jeff? One last question. Do you want to sleep with Jeff? Uh, Now's your chance. Uh, this is your chance. I'll catfish you, but that's it. Oh, oh, that's so. He's got enough of that. He's got yeah. enough of that. All right. Well, thanks for watching, everybody. We'll see you guys next week. Bye.